Shalom, shalom. Kum ya shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Come in the room. Shalom, family. Let's let some people come in the room. We got a Truth Tuesday lesson. We also bringing it to you live on Clubhouse. Okay. Let's um, let some people fill in. All right. Um, we got an interesting lesson for you tonight. It's called How Does the Letter Kill? And what is really the meaning of that statement? Okay. We got some people in here early. Shalom, Abinoam, Soldier Kaivon, Terrence Bolden, Carla Tyler, Karubel, Beverly, Jasmine, Joanne Gilchrist, John Allen, Azaniah, SOT, Ohio, DC, Alabama, San Francisco, North Carolina, Soldier Boaz, Shemaya, Yawasak, Captain Yahawada, Holy Yasharala, said, believer of the report, Araya, Brother Will, Proverb Nation, Wanda, Ayasha, uh, and Sister Aisha, Shalom, Soldier Kadar, Lauren, um, Captain Israya, uh, Joshua English, Elisa, Ashara Malak, Nina, Shalom, Shalom. Gonna let y'all come in the room. Ah. Oh, praise to the most. Uh, can y'all see that all right? Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. We'll probably zoom in, King. Let's see. So, like that. Mm. That's cool. Shalom, shalom. What y'all see before y'all today is the feast day calendar. What we have, we, y'all just missed a beautiful lesson for the blowing of the trumpets. If y'all haven't seen it, please go on our YouTube channel and watch it. Like, share the video. It's a great lesson brought up by the Adawan. All praise to the Most High. And then what we have next is the Day of Atonement, October 4th. Make sure y'all are preparing yourself for this Day of Atonement. It's a complete fast without food or water, right? And Sons of Thunder will be observing this feast day. Well, this high holy day on October 4th, man. All right. Then what we next is Feast of Tabernacles, October 9th through the 17th. And we got the new moon eighth month on October 24th, man, at even. So these are the feast day calendars. We will have a new one coming up shortly. All right, Saints, be patient with us, All right? And then you know, make sure y'all are observing these feast days to the best of y'all ability. Okay. Shalom. Hey, uh, hey, hey, um, hey, I want to tell the brothers and sisters that uh, Captain Yaakov, yeah, hey, he tells he tells us to um, uh, thank thank brothers and sisters for the prayers, okay, for the prayers the brothers and sisters sent up for him. A a a the most highs is definitely working working on that brother because uh, a couple of days ago he wasn't feeling that well, and I, I talked to him today and he says he's in good spirits and he feels like his health is coming back. So oh, all great. praises to the Most High, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahushah. By Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahushah. All praise to the Most High. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, who do we got? We got 65 on the call, on the uh, YouTube. We got 39 in the class. Welcome to the class. Uh, Shalom for... Spending your Tuesday evening with us. It's a lot of edification going out. The truth is going out rapid fire. So we're very appreciative that you uh, chose to spend some time with us. Okay. So let's begin, Khan. Uh, All right. Today I was in a room with some Muslims. And they were talking to a Christian. And the Christian was Ill, I'll admit, was ill-informed on Islam and what it teaches, but he had taken a, a, a position of debate. I went on stage to talk to the brother up there that was representing Islam because I personally feel like Islam is not a religion for our people based on the history of it and what my studies have revealed. And I always want to talk to brothers about that. And of course, the Christian brother made me an enemy, called me a black Hebrew Israelite. I hadn't even spoken yet and separated himself from me. And they tore him up on the stage. Then he wanted to hand the conversation over to me, right? Typical hypocrite. Now, when I was able to speak, I spoke directly to the brother and I said, listen, I'm not up here to make a scene. 
I'm not up here for sport. I want to genuinely talk to you about my studies and what I've found when I've studied Islam and how you as a black man can rationalize these things and can accept them. And then the uh, Arab man jumped in and I'm black too. And he wanted to argue with me. He wanted me to pick up the argument that the uh, Christian was carrying. And I, I I told him straightly, I don't really want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. I got thick lips. I got a broad nose. And I was like, that's racist. So my phenotype <laughs> decides my nationality. Bring it up. The size of my lips makes me a race. That's that's racist. That's why I don't want to talk to you. No, no, you you don't you don't want to deal. Show me how Islam is violent when your religion uh uh slaughters everybody. And I'm like, you I don't want to talk to you. And I think that's racist and it's it's unwelcome conversation. And I just left the room, right? I don't owe Ishmael no audience. So what I'm saying is the thing that he said before I left was show me how Islam is violent when your religion kills everybody. And the Christian could not defend that. And I wasn't going to reveal it to him how I answer those questions because I have no interest in talking to him. These people are not sincere. What they want to do is study your responses. Right. And then they want to be able to build a case against you. OK, that's what they want to be able to do. So. I'm not going to help him do that. All right. Um, so that's why we have this lesson. And this lesson is for the nation. This is for y'all. That's right. We might have said, how do you answer that question? Because there is a lot of judgments in the scriptures. His challenge was so detailed. It said, even Christ tells you to kill people, but y'all don't follow him correctly. Because in Matthew 23, he said, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, and whatever they tell you, observe, bid, and do it. Now, he's under the impression that the Pharisees would have told you to stone people to death, to put people to death, to cast people out of the congregation, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and Christ would have been saying, you have to do that. Not understanding the true mission of Christ, because the teachings of Christ are not contained in their Quran. They don't understand the advent of Christ and what is the point of him coming. They don't understand it. So it's a completely skewed perspective. And it does make sense to a novice. I understand why he said that. You see, that's something else we have to. Uh, yeah, the brother was calling himself a Gentile and everything. He said, I'm not no black Hebrew Israelite, hmm. blah, blah, blah. Just misrepresenting the understanding. And that's what happens when people take that debate position too quickly. It's unnecessary. Right. Unneeded. Um, uh, it, 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 it gets muddy when you're talking to someone who really doesn't care and he's trying to make a name off you. A lot of debates we take on Clubhouse when we speak to the people of that persuasion, that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to make a name off you. They want to get it on their record. I defeated a Christian in a battle and then they go and smoke hookah and brag about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not sincere. That's why I said, I don't really want to talk to you. I want to talk to the brother. That's who I want to speak to. And uh, he, that, of course, that insulted him because these nations like to be acknowledged. And I'm mm -hmm. paying him no credence at all. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Hey, listen, brother. I'm your brother, too. I got thick lips. My skin is black. I'm like, my beard is black. My skin is not black. This is number one problem. You're, to me, as a nationalist, you're already racist. That's why I don't want to talk to you. And I just went back to talking to the brother. And Ishmael's a wild man. He couldn't stand it, man. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm going to talk to y'all tonight, right? We're going to get the understanding as a family tonight if you care to hear and understand, all right? So that's just a quick preface. Uh, Matatawa Yasharala says, I never heard that position from a Muslim. Yeah, they learn. That's what I'm saying. They don't know what the scriptures say. They listen to us debate their friends and burn their friends up. Then they go home and, and put a candlelight and study all night how to rebuttal that question. Man. That's what that's what they do. OK, they obsessed with it. All right. You are like a trophy for them. You know why? Because in these last days, the world is realizing that we are the scholars in the earth and that we have the correct and proper understanding of the Holy Scriptures and the covetous of that thing. And it matters to them that we know that they're better than us. But 
once you come into this troop, you start to become self-sufficient and the other nations become less and less important. You understand? And what does that do? That, that angers them, man. That acknowledgement, that shake my hand spirit. They need that acknowledgement, man. And we're not giving it in these last days. In these last days, we're acknowledging our people. We are focused completely on our nation and our people. Mm -hmm. right? So what we're going to do is explain tonight the meaning of the letter killer and why it doesn't kill anymore and mm -hmm. how to properly observe Christ's instruction of doing what the scribes and Pharisees tell you, however, not executing the judgments of the law and why that is no longer necessary. Okay. Uh, so lucky I had a one. Yeah, you how would have said I, I didn't take the bait. No, sir. I'm I'm getting better each and every day and, and, and improving myself as a speaker and a brother, man. Uh go, go ahead. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna turn the AC on for kind of the one. Hey, just just to just to go on the point that the other one was making about Islam. So people don't want to I pray y'all can hear me on the clubhouse. But this this right here is crazy, right? Because everybody likes to um, hide their past, whether it's Christianity or it's, it's Islam. One of the two biggest religions that our people flood in. And they like to point fingers at us and say, see, you reading a white man's book and this, that, and the third, not understanding that the uh, the Arab, the Arabians, and the people who made Islam were destroying our people before. This is history that could be said. This is this is Babylon to Timbuktu, right? But the, what I'm about to read is the second stage of the Islamic revolution, right? On page 50, right? It starts on page 49, and what I read, it spills into page 50, right? It says the fanatical stage of the of most revolutions. It's a bestial, ruthless, bloody, chaotic affair. Oh, you guys, gonna, uh, brother, you're going to have to talk with Yahweh Paul's mic muted and your mic on in order for us to hear properly here on the clubhouse. So I can. All right, I'm a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute up because I muted you to talk through me, but then it's like secondary through my computer speakers. So I'm going to mute up and then you go ahead. Kind of why. Unmute yourself on the clubhouse and continue on. God, I pray I can hear you. Well, if y'all if y'all didn't hear me, uh, if y'all didn't hear me what, before, this is Babylon the Timbuk Timbuk two. I'm reading page forty nine at the bottom. It says the second stage of the Islamic revolution, right? And, and this reveals some of the past of Islam, right? It says the fan the fanatical stage of most uh, revolutions is a bestial, ruthless, bloody chaotic affair. The throats of men are cut from ear to ear. There is an absence of rationalization and extreme f uh, fanatic fanatism sets in. So it was with Muhammad. So Muhammad was basically being a, a brute beast, very brutal in the second stages of the Islamic re revolution, killing men that was not Muslim. Now, what y'all will have to do is explain this. If y'all want to point the finger at the Bible and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what y'all have to do is start criticizing your, your, your religious leader, right? But they will not do that. They will take this man and hold him to a high pedestal, right? And they condemn the God of the Bible for his just judgments, man. And I yeah. Um, and, that, and that's a good and that's a good point I, okay and if you look at that thing on the flip side okay you know they i remember uh being on the clubhouse i want to say about a week and a half ago and we were dealing with muslim brothers then as well a lot of the muslim brothers believe that we're we're cramping their style we're we're we're, we're picking up where they left off we're some sort of black movement okay you know what i mean that 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 that's you know picking up you know the, the 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 picking up on the strings of uh, uh, Farrakhan and uh, you know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But here's the deal: even when you're dealing with actual Ishmael, okay, Ishmael doesn't understand that their history uh, is a copycat from our doctrine. Okay, so when they say things like the Adawans bringing out, all right, that you know uh, 
you know, you all ought to listen to Moses. It's because of what their unholy Quran says. Surah uh, 9 and 5, okay, and uh, what is it? Surah 3, all right, Surah 3 and 151, where it tells you to kill the disbelievers, okay? It tells you to kill the disbelievers, all right? And they're under the understanding that that's what that means. Technically, it is. Technically, it is. Okay, if you don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments, okay, according to our law, there were certain laws, not all, there were certain laws that were punishable by death. Okay, but what they need to understand is that understanding came from the scriptures. It came from the holy scriptures. All right, you know what I mean? The Bible. All right, and you're a copycat to our doctrine. But go ahead there, Adam. God, it's real like that. Now, his response was that the the Quran allows for the destruction of apostates and people who mean violence towards the Muslim. And he tried to defense it that way. But that is not honest. OK, now. This wasn't really about them, but I guess we went that way. And ed edification is edification, no matter how you put it. So it's good knowledge and we're always going to share it. Right. But that's that is that is not true. OK, the, the, the Christian that was debating with them was trying to use the Hadith. But again, guys, you can't just Google something right and say, I'm going to debate someone who practices this with my findings in Google. It does not work that way. Just like we would be angry if somebody took a biblical scripture out of context and tried to use it to debate us, we would spend our rebuttal explaining to them, you don't understand that scripture. And then if they happen to be right, it discredits you. So the least you could do is study it properly and know what you're talking about. That's number one. So you're not just going to go on Google. Scriptures in the Quran that says you can kill. And then, no, you need to endeavor to know it what it is that you propose to debate with. Have courtesy. They don't have the courtesy to learn what a practicing Hebrew Israelite believes and master his understanding and truly see if they disagree with our perspective. They don't have the patience or courtesy for that. They just like to slander people. And they're very arrogant, especially the ones from overseas. So what I'm saying is, don't be like them. Don't just go on Google and I think I'm going to source an argument. And then I'm going to pop up and um, uh, just debate some Muslim who's been uh, practicing that religion and speaking the language for years. That's, that's unwise. Instead... Look into that matter. The Bible says, be not ignorant of any matter, large or small. Don't be ignorant. Challenge your own understanding. I think this means this. And look that up and see the different conversations surrounding it. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, right? Now, I'm going to show you all something. If you allow me, uh, that's going into the lesson. But I'm going to show you something. This is called Tafsir. Ta uh, what is the Tafsir? The Tafsir is the exegesis of the Quran. That what it is. If you want to know what a practicing Muslim who speaks the language thinks a surah and ayat in the Quran mean, you want to go here. All right. If you're on the YouTube watching, you can see this. What I'll do is if someone would post a link to the vid, not necessary, I'll do it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the top of the clubhouse. So y'all can watch too. Okay. Brother's got the, uh, the, top of the clubhouse. hold on, let me mute the audio. Brother's got the goodly, uh, proper phenotype Moses up there, I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, not that eat my other one. That's yeah. right, other one. Hey, so like I want to see a big the water to a big mic, the water, Barack the king. The water, big mic, thank you. We need that, uh, come feast with us. Now, on the screen, this is a website I use, it's called altopsir.com, right? You click the link that says the top series. You got Surah and you got verse or Ayat. And then you got school. There are many schools. See, this is a Muslim might come to you and say, we all teach the same thing. And there's only one Islam and we all understand it the same way. Some of them don't even know what they're talking about. And why do I know this? I took the time to learn from a practicing Muslim how to talk to him about Islam and where he gets his understandings from. And I was taught this by a practicing Algerian Muslim. He said, you got to go to the Tafsir. And the Tafsir has different schools. These are basically breakdowns. Now, I want to show you something. In Surah 9, 
And when we talk about indiscriminate killing, what a Muslim will tell you is there is no compulsion in religion. And that's in the Quran. A Muslim will also tell you one can serve Allah or one cannot. That's also in the Quran. But it is contradictory to Surah chapter 9. Now, Surah chapter 9, I'm going to read it in the Quran. And then we have Tafsir to give you the exegesis. Not me, not what I think the verses mean, but what a Arabic speaking Muslim is telling you, a scholar respected is telling you these verses mean. So like you could blow it up a little bit more? I will. I'm going I'm to get the Quran out first. Now, in Surah 9, and, uh, and my, I like to read uh, the translation of um, Yusuf Ali. Yusuf. You, Yusuf Ali is the scholar who taught Muslims that Isaiah was prophesying about Muhammad. Mm. Now, Muslims will say, hey, Isaiah, your Bible talks about our prophet. They will say that to you. Well, they learned that from Yusuf Ali. He is the champion of that doctrine. Now, I'm already talking stuff that you see. Hey, I never knew that. But some of y'all be eager to go debate, and you're not really ready for that fight. A, a, a Jehovah Witness recent convert has no business coming to the camp spot trying to debate us. He does That's not. Right. He's not ready. The same thing goes for us. You you don't have no business going to Amalek and telling him what is, what's in his Talmud because you watched my class on last Friday. You were supposed to take my class, take the jewels I gave you, and then go forward and build on that and put some time into understanding the Talmud and doing research and history on what it is and uh, different interpretations. You wasn't supposed to just say, oh, I'm going to take y'all all's argument and use it. That is not the way. That's not the way. That's not the way, okay? That's not the way. So with that being said, we're going to look at Surah 9, and we're going to see some indiscriminate killing. And this is going to be much different than the judgments you see in the Bible. Now look at this. It says, a declaration of immunity from Allah and his messenger to the pagans. Is that too, still too small, King? Ila. Is that too, still too small? That's it. That's it right there. Okay. A declaration of immunity from Allah and his messenger to those of the pagans with whom ye have contracted mutual alliances. To me, that says I'm offering immunity to people who do not be believe Islam because I have an alliance with them. I've had Muslims say this is only talking about a specific tribe. I've had Muslims say this is talking about the Koresh people. I've had Muslims say uh, that's not what it means at all. And the only proper understanding is if you properly spoke Arabic. See that? Yeah. I don't play that. That's why you come to Tafsir. What does the Tafsir say? This is a declaration of immunity from God and his messenger mm -hmm. to reach the idolaters with whom you have made a pact or a pact of an indefinite period of time or one for a period of less than more than four months. The annulment of the pact shall be as God's mentions in his saying. This is rules on how to keep peace with people who do not follow Islam. I didn't say it. We read it from their own exegesis, right? Let's right. Try, let's try a different school. Sometimes it doesn't always, uh, no tafsir from the Sunni exists for this verse. It says what it says. Uh, you have a bridge tafsir, right? And then that has different schools. You got Jafari, you got Zaidi, right? And, it, and that has different schools and breakdowns and you got to cycle through them, right? It, that's a lot of work, right? I'm going to pick one. Um, now look at how detailed this one is. It says, and from his narration from Ibn Abbas, that's someone who would have memorized the Quran, 
who said regarding Allah saying freedom from obligation. This is freedom from obligation to idolaters with whom you have made a treaty. But then they broke that treaty. Freedom from obligation is the breaking of treaties. Allah says, whoever has a treaty with the messenger, let him know that it is broken. Some of them had a treaty lasting four months. Now I see some agreement and some more than nine. While others had treaties for short periods. Others had no treaties. All these treaties were broken except for the treaty with the Banu Kenana, which was nine months, sons of Kenana. Whoever had a treaty for more or less than four, these treaties were ratified to last four months from the beginning of the day of immolation. And whoever had a treaty for four months, was it was ratified the last four months beginning from the day of immolation. Those who had a treaty of nine months were left as they were. While those who did not sign a treaty were granted one of 50 days. Now, this is very technical. And this is a different exegesis than the first guy. So that's two Muslims speaking the proper Arabic that got two different interpretations and wisdoms according to this scripture. You see that? And that's why we like to keep it simple. I'm just going to go to the essential. And the essential top here keeps it basic, right? For time. Mm -hmm. Let's go to verse two. It says, go then for four months backwards and forwards as you wish throughout the land, but you cannot frustrate Allah by your falsehood, which is your idolatry, but that Allah will cover with shame those who reject him. This is dedicated to people who are not converting to Islam. Now we got good business going, but y'all not becoming Muslim. And, I'm, and you got four months to do as you please and something is about to happen to you if you do not convert. See that? See that? Mm. Let's get the top seer on that. It says, journey freely and travel in security, you idolaters, in the land for four months. Uh, let's get to the point. It says, but you cannot escape God and you shall not elude his punishment for God degrades the disbelievers and humiliates them by having them killed and in the hereafter by sending them to fire. My guy is laughing. Hey, I'm laughing at one because hey, they had a grace period and hey, they had a grace period at a while. Four months to get this. <laughs> God. Now the Muslims was on the stage saying things like, no, Allah doesn't care if you reject him or worship him. That's your choice. There's no compulsion in religion. Uh, people who reject the religion are to be excommunicated and left alone. You don't kill them. What is this saying? Now, I'm going to explain something later. Let's go to the next verse. It says, and an announcement from Allah and his messenger to the people on the great pilgrimage that Allah and his messenger dissolved these treaties with the pagans. If ye repent, it is best for you. But if you turn away, you cannot frustrate Allah and proclaim a grievous penalty to those who reject faith. But I thought the Quran said there's no compulsion in religion. You can't make right. me a Muslim. That's right. Of course, if I would have tried to do this on their stage, I would have been overtalked. My mic would have been muted. They would have been argumentative. They would have called me all types of names. They'd have sent me to the audience to break my train of thought. Mm -hmm. They'd have brought me back up to act like they was being fair. Then they'd have sent me back down again because I would have stood as a man on my square and it would have been a waste of time. Mm -hmm. you know huh. That's the way they play. So what I'm saying is, it's no reason to talk to, a, to, to them. The, 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 the most pertinent and important conversation would be the one that I would have with my brother who's in That's right. He's gonna, he, he should respect me coming from the same culture because we, we as black people like to assume that the other nations have uh, a respect for us culturally, but they don't, mm -hmm. all right? They don't. You, right. you will find out that you are the nation not desired amongst even third world nations. They don't like you, okay? It's a lucky other one. Go ahead. That, hey, that's crazy. We were just talking about that before, how the scriptures are to bring to remembrance, right? You're yeah. not going to, the scripture is not going to bring nothing to Ishmael's mind. You see it's what I'm saying? Not it's not for him. It's going to bring to Jacob's mind. And Jacob's going to remember his inheritance in the process. That's right. For him. 
you know, and they use. Hey, Salaki, I got a precept out. Hey, we, hey, hey, it, it's, that's the spirit, Durop. Well, hey, this is the book of, of Psalms, chapter 147 and verse 19. Hey, this is what we got to understand. Hey, now, you know, you know, Adewan, okay, and other brothers, okay, they, they, they'll, they'll get on the stage and they'll deal with brothers and sisters for edification's sake, okay? All right? They may be, you know, engaged in a debate all right, with, with, with people okay, about their doctrine, about their certain religion, which is their, their discipline, okay, but it's for your edification and your understanding, okay? Psalms 147 and 19, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. So they're not going to understand our books. They're not going to understand our ways, they're not going to understand our laws anyway, okay? So mm -hmm. when Adewan says he'd rather deal with his brother, okay, he'd rather deal with those who have the opportunity to come into this thing, okay? Hey, that, that's completely understood, Adewan. Absolutely. You? Absolutely. Now, look at Tafsir for that verse. It, let's just get to the point. Those who disbelieve will get a painful chastisement, namely of slaughter or capture. In this world... End of punishment hereafter. I didn't break it down that way. Right. Al, Al J. Lalan, he broke it down that way. You see, you see what I'm saying? Do you think, uh, I don't expect to be on stage with uh, those brothers of that nation and expect them to entertain my scholarship or even allow me to read this in a sensible fashion and discuss it with me, honestly. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, that's that's why I backed away from um, trying to talk to them and focused mainly on the brother. But this is for y'all. Now look at verse four. The treaties are not dissolved with the pagans in whom you've entered alliance and who have not subsequently failed you in art. That's King's English for we're going to break the treaties with those who who didn't keep up our treaty with what we asked for them. And we're going to kill them if they don't become Muslim. But the ones who refuse to become Muslim but did what we asked according to the rules of the treaty and they never aided anyone against us, we're going to fulfill our engagement with them until the end of their term. We're going to be cool. Allah loved the righteous. <laughs> so if you keep your treaty with me and do what I asked you, you don't have to believe in Islam and I'm not going to kill you. But if you break your treaty with me, you better become a Muslim now or you're going to die. You got four months, all right, because you didn't meet my standard. And who knows what that is? Let's look at Tafsir. Okay. And this is funny to me because the most high of the Bible, he doesn't play games like this. But Allah, he makes room for this kind of uh, respect of persons. It says, Ex expect accepting the idolaters of whom you made a pact and have not diminished their commitment to you with regards to the terms of the pact, nor supported and assisted anyone among the disbelievers against you. As for these, fulfill your pact with them to the completion of the term. God loves those who fulfill his pacts. That's very convenient. That, that's extremely convenient if I want to stay in power. Now look, but when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them seize them beleaguer them and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war but if they repent and establish regular prayers and practice regular charity then open the way for them mm -hmm. Allah, Allah is most merciful so even the ones that kept their deeds you better become a Muslim too, or we're going to lie in wait for you and use every strategy of war. Wow. We're going to seize you. We're going to slay you wherever we find you. Man. I've had I've had Muslims told me this was uh, Mohammed was being attacked by people and he was trying to make peace with them and he had no choice but to kill them. Tafsir ain't say that. That's right. Well, hold on now. Tafsir said when the sacred months have passed that is the end of the deferment 
slay the idolaters wherever you find them during a lawful period or sacred one and take them captive and combine them to castles and forts until they have no choice to accept being put to death or acceptance of Islam. Man. I, I, I didn't break it down like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to bring this out to the brother and say, maybe you're not aware of Surah Anand and you're trying to paint Islam as all accepting and all loving and criticize the Bible for the the judgments that the Bible has prescribed for certain sins. Yes, I understand. But don't be a hypocrite. Maybe you're not aware of this. I, I Listen, it took me how many? It took me 12 minutes to explain this. Mm -hmm. There's no way they would have given me the time. Man. <laughs> There's no way. They wouldn't have let me finish. They'd have, I probably would have been kicked out of the room and my account flagged. That's right. right. Easy. They would have kicked out easy. <laughs> but th these are the things that I'm talking about, guys. This is this is this is what I'm saying. Like you theolo theolo theological studies is a long walk. Okay. And what you have at Sons of Thunder on this screen between Micaiah, Captain Durak, and Captain Yara all are brothers who put the time in. They didn't just microwave show up. I understand all the breakdowns. And Tonight, they asked me to come teach the letter killer. And they're capable instructors themselves. So that's showing you the attitude of a, a, a Bible student. You a lifelong student, all right? I'm a student. You think I know all of this? I had to humble myself to someone of another religion to show me the tenets of his religion to see what it is that I propose to be against or I'd be a hypocrite. I tell, What do I say in the camp, brother? I say... We can't disagree with something we what? Never, never, uh, don't understand. Don't understand, that's right. You can't, you can't disagree with something you don't understand. You can't say that's wrong. How? How you know that? Because it is. Now you're a heretic, I mean a fanatic, rather. Mm -hmm. So go and learn it, take the time. And it don't have to be, that's what a camp is for. You got some brothers that's strong with the Islam. You got some brothers that's strong with uh, Roman Catholicism. You got some brothers that's strong with the Judaism, you got some brothers that's strong with the Nuwabi, and you got some brothers that's strong with the Egyptology. Because one man would devote his whole life and can't learn all the wisdom in the world. The Bible tells you you can't even fit everything Jesus taught in a book. It's, mm -hmm. There's not enough books in the world to fill it. You understand? So mm -hmm. that's why we're a team and we help each other. That's okay? right. So Islam will kill you if you do not convert. Surah 9, 1 through 6. Read that. How does that work when you tell us there's no compulsion in religion? Islam has something called the doctrine of abrogation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you this now. And it's in uh, Surah 2, I believe. Oh, I was wrong. Surah 16. I'm going to put this on the screen because this is going to complete the thought and then we can get into the Bible. Right. But this is interesting if you... If you come on Truth Tuesday, you're gonna learn a lot of truth. I'm not. Mm. I'm not teaching it. We read it from their sources, right? Mm. There's no reason to get upset with me. Got it. Um, I want Surah 16 and 101. Now look at this. A sophisticated Muslim will say you are correct. It did say that I should slay you. When the forbidden months are passed, unless you repent and accept Islam, it does say that. Why do I say a sophisticated Muslim will say that? Because a sophisticated Muslim will be honest. Instead of being a fan of his religion, which the Christian brother was doing, because the Bible says if you're a sodomite, you're supposed to die. The Bible says if you're a rapist, you're supposed to be put to death. The Bible says if a woman is, is, uh, is married to a man, but she played the harlot, and when he laid with her, she was not a maid. She supposed to be put to death. The Bible says that an idolater is supposed to be put to death. The Bible says a murderer is supposed to be put to death. Mm -hmm. The Bible says a blasphemer is supposed to be put to death. The Bible says the adulterer and the adulteress is supposed to be put to death. The Bible says a disobedient and gainsaying child is supposed to be put to death. Yes. See how I can admit that? Because I'm what you would call a sophisticated Christian. I'm an Israelite. That's right. I'm not a basic Christian, which is 
which think there's a trinity and a virgin birth, you still on that level. You got to learn that those are doctrines that have origins. You got to get back to understanding prophecy. So it's weird. Not to put you down, but it's honest. All right. You're not aware of certain things. And we have to teach you before you can debate us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can admit those things. And then if you want to have the second com conversation is, do we still do that? I could talk to you about that, which we're going right. to do tonight. But the Muslim is going to have to say this. Yes, Surah 9 says that, but the reason it says that is because the doctrine of abrogation. And you're going to say, well, what's that? It says when we substitute one revelation for another and Allah knows best what he reveals in stages, they say thou art but a forger, but most of them understand not. Now, what does that mean? It's saying you're going to meet people that are going to tell you the Quran is contradicting itself. But what really is happening is Allah is revealing things in stages and we can substitute one revelation for another. Now, the Bible don't say nothing like that. It did. It's crazy. But that's the doctrine of abrogation. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, that, that's what a sophisticated Muslim will tell you. He'll say, we could, um, you know, you, when you when you get a law that contradicts an earlier one, there's a reason for that. And it's called abrogation. Now, I'm going to show you this. Now, look where we at. We on Blue Letter. Blue Letter Bible is explaining this. There is no compulsion in religion. And look what they do, Surah 9. But you can die if you don't convert. That's later. <laughs> even, even Blue Letter know this, right? That's not what I wanted. I wanted uh, the doctrine of abrogation. The law, they call it the, the law of abrogation, right? Our response to that would be, God does not contradict himself. And look what scripture they use, Malachi yeah. 3 and 6. Wow. I am the Lord, I change not. Wow. See that, y'all? Understanding this is key. Even Blue Letter Bible has commentary on the law of abrogation. I thought that would be nice to share with y'all. Okay. Um, and y'all can look into that on your own time, but our lesson is not devoted to Islam's explanations for why they change their feelings later. All right. Our lesson is how does the letter kill? Hey, hey Salakia, hey Adawan, hey, hey, when you say how they change their feelings later, hey, that's hey, that's some of them. I like to, as as we say, you know, we're the true, you know, Christians, okay. You know, I like to say that so-called uh ISIS and so-called, you know, um, what are they called? The Taliban. Taliban. Okay. And all of them, those are the real Muslims because they actually go by, all right? They go by Surah 9, okay? They go by Surah 3. That's the reason why, okay, they're being depicted as so-called terrorists, this, that, and the third, because they're actually executing according to their religion. You're going to be a Muslim or you're going to die? And that's right. Are you going to die? Okay, I don't know if they give them four months out of one. I don't know if they get that great. <laughs> <laughs> they give like four minutes out of one. Right, right. It's wild, man. That's right. It's wild. Um, you have sheiks and Hafez teaching this concept, but um, I just don't see it in the Bible. Okay, um, you're not. You're you're not gonna tell me that my God has changed his mind. Now, here comes the Muslim saying, did not your God repent of the evil he thought to do to Israel? Hmm. Mm. Maybe he doesn't know that. I know that. So I'll say it. See how I'm being fair? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, if the Lord says thou shalt not, later he does not say thou shalt. That's what I'm saying. If the Lord says Israel is his chosen people, later he does not say Israel is no longer my choice. There's no scripture yeah. that says that. All right. If the Lord say, if you don't obey me, I'm going to kill you. But if y'all repent, I'm going to forgive you. That's not contradiction. That's patience and mercy. All right. And a lot of y'all don't understand that. I wish I had mercy more than in four months. Because you're not converting me. They, they're going to put me to death. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I, do, I do good business. I would have kept my uh, part of the bargain. 
but they just still um put me to death. That's right. death. See that? Mm. So now let's let's talk about how the letter kills. Okay. okay. Number one, nobody in the Bible says it but Paul. Mm. Number two, Paul says it for a reason. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter three. Kind of the one from the top. Yes. All right, God. It's the book of Second Corinthians, three, from the top. It says, "Do we again do command ourselves, or we, or need we?" So, like, read again, read again. God, God, God. It says, "Do we, be, do we begin again to get tempt ourselves, or need we?" As some others, epistles of condemnation to you, or letters of condemnation from you. So basically, do I need to certify myself as a proper teacher? That's Paul's question to the uh, congregation in Corinth. I need to prove that I know what I'm talking about to you. Some of y'all put us through this in our everyday life. I say this all the time. Hebrew, we as teachers, we're not perfect men. We make mistakes. Now, the way Israel handles mistakes is when we make a mistake, now I can't listen to you no more. You can't teach no more. Go hide under a rock. Go kill yourself. That's the way Israel treats us, man. And we was talking about that at camp last week about how we destroy our leaders because they did something human. And then we have nothing left after. Instead of saying, you made a mistake. You're accountable for the mistake. Now let's build the brother back up. And, and like the Bible says, for mm -hmm. we all get tempted sometimes. Right. Sure. It's wild out here, man. Mercy is not easy to find amongst our community. All right. That's why I tell you, brothers, you got to be blameless as best you can. And when you make a mistake, own up to it quick. Don't linger. All right. Uh, some people, some people are, uh, um, some people are just not forgiven. They say it on the clubhouse is choppy for everybody except me. I don't know. Usually, it's good on clubhouse. Um, I'm gonna move the phone back a little bit now. Hey, I think we all should mute up if we're not speaking. Yeah, everybody's yeah. muted on the everybody's muted. No, 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 no. The clubhouse, not the, the, the YouTube. YouTube is good. Okay, kind of the one. So that's what Paul is asking. He's saying, Do I gotta certify myself for you and prove to you that I'm a good instructor? Do I gotta remind you? Go ahead. Kind of the one. It says, Ye are ye are so lucky. Should I turn on my, my mic? Can y'all hear him good on the clubhouse? Nah. I got a headphone. It's very, very choppy. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna mute you. Go ahead and, and speak, bro. Kind of the one. It says, "Ye are, ye are our epistles, written in your hearts, known and read of all men." Now that's what he's saying is the teachings that we have taught you prove what we teach by the way that y'all behave. You actually certify us. You are our epistle. You are our writings. Known and read of all men. You proclaim my teachings by how you live. That's what he's saying. Read on. Like for as much as you are manifest declared to be the epistles of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. This is not an opportunity for a Christian to come in from the rafters. This is not your chance. It's not talking about don't keep the commandments. As he wasn't even talking about that. That's right. He's, he's saying you declare that Christ taught us by how you live. And it's written on your heart. It's not something that we can read. It's how you're living. You are a living example that Christ has come in and taught us how to be. Read on. Got it, one. So lucky. Verse four. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not to not that we are significant of ourselves to think anything uh -uh. of ourselves. Uh uh. Uh uh. The rock. You read well. Read. Take your time. Look at what you're saying. Got it, one. It's the book of it's the book of Second Corinthians, chapter three, and verse four. And such trust we have through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our significance is of God. No sufficiency. You can't sufficiency 
Yes. Because he has broken up. So lucky. Our sufficiency is of God. You know, I hope you're not on the phone. You in your book? Hmm? You in your book? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in my book. All right. So now, we are not sufficient of ourselves, but through the help that God offers us. So don't get proud. Read on. Huh. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The New Testament is teaching repentance and mercy. This is not a chance for you to come in and say, do not keep the commandments. That's wrong. That's an improper exegesis of 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. I'm going to put your doctrine to the test if you say this means the law is death and just loving Jesus is life. I'm going to put your doctrine to the test. The commandment of honoring your father and mother is found in the law. And the, what comes with that? Y'all can answer that. What's the promise for honoring your father and mother? A long, a living a long life at a long on the earth. How, how can the letter killeth if that's the promise? And Christ taught that. That's deep. That's right. It can't mean that. How is there shall thou shall have no other God before my face? Killing you. How? So I, I can go be a Muslim. I can go be a Buddhist because the letter kill it. I'm free to do as I please in Christ. Right. No, that would be wrong also. How can thou shall not still kill you? How can if you lay with your wife, you got to wash yourself and be unclean till sundown? How does washing yourself kill you? How does, how does keeping the feast of uh, first fruits kill you? Right. How, do, how does keeping the feast of trumpets kill you? How does enjoying the wilderness and having a tabernacles kill you? Hmm. Y'all didn't think that through. Thank That's you. not a strong position. So what is Paul saying? I'm going to explain something to you. Let's go to Romans 1 and 26. And then we're going to come back to Corinthians. This is the book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 26. Go and ahead. it reads, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What are we talking about? Everyone knows. Read on. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meant. The same author said, men lying with men and women lying with women, the recompense of their decision to do that is death. And the author of 2 Corinthians is the same person. The author of 2 Corinthians said, the letter killeth. The author of 2 Corinthians says, you deserve to die for committing this sin. Receiving in themselves that recompense of their mistake, error, which was me, which is deserved. That's what he said. What was the punishment for being a sodomite, according to the law? Even in Christ. Yeah. Death. That's right. You got, you got brought to the gates of the city and stoned, man. The author of 2 Corinthians said they deserve that. So when you invoke him and use the letter killeth to say that the law is bad, explain that through this verse. Because the author of Romans, same guy, brother Paul, tribe of Benjamin, said if you a sodomite, the recompense for that is death and you deserve it. It's meat for what you've done. Read on. Con, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, 
wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full uh, of they're, envy. They're saying they cannot hear. They're saying they cannot hear the reader on Clubhouse. I'm shocked at that. Normally, I set my phone on the computer. And when brothers teach, it's good. What I've what I've done different is I'm using speakers and not my computer, my my computer speaker. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna I'm gonna eject the uh, physical speakers. Mic check real quick. Say something. Time. Hello, my my brothers here. How does how does that sound? Hello. Sounds better. Still chopping. Hey, I mean, do we do we need to get on the clubhouse there, Adam? Because I'm not on the clubhouse. What I can do is, um, uh, yeah, if you get on the clubhouse and when you speak and you speak through this, also just turn your volume all the way down so that they don't get feedback from the YouTube. But you being on the clubhouse and as a speaker, then they can enjoy uh, with better fidelity. Um, Yara, all you can do that too, please. All right, Khan, I don't want. Uh, just raise your hands. I'm gonna bring you up right now. Uh, thank you, Halab. So just turn your volume all the way down. And when you're not speaking, mute your microphone. Shalom. All right. So Malachi, you do the same thing. Um, I got my phone's volume all the way down, so nobody's going to be able to hear you. Uh, mic check on the clubhouse. Uh, Mike Kaya, go ahead. Open your mic. Hey, can you brothers and sisters hear me? Perfect. All right, All right, brothers read, hear me. Read, read that, Ock. All right, Don, I'm going to start at verse 28. This is the book of Romans, chapter 1, in verse 28, and it reads, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. All right, go ahead. Now that was very good. The same author who told you the letter killer told you that you deserve to die for doing that stuff. Now, I, you have to make that make sense. You want to invoke 2 Corinthians 3 and 6 to say, don't keep the law. The law kills you. But the same author said, if you commit fornication, that's a sin. Covetousness, that's a sin. Uh maliciousness bearing a grudge against your brother that's a sin murder sin debate you're a reviler you're you're uh incontinent that's a sin deceitful that's a sin malignity you carrying uh grudges another way of saying it that's a sin backbiter you slanderer that's mm -hmm. a sin you hate god that's a sin you're despiteful that's a sin you're proud that's a sin bolster is part of being proud Inventors of evil things, that's a sin. Disobedient to parents, that's a sin. Without understanding, that's to your detriment. Covenant breakers, use a sin. Without natural affection, to your detriment. Implacable, nobody could please you. And you're unmerciful, that's a sin. Who knowing the judgment of God, they that which commit these things are worthy of death. So it, so... The author of the the author of the phrase the letter killer believes that the letter should kill. Mm. Because if you're doing those things, you're worthy of death. What what nerve you got to be unmerciful? Are you kidding me? 
I'll fix you. That's what the Lord says. What nerve you got to be disobedient to your parents? I told you that if you obey your parents, your life will be long in the land. But if you disobey them, your life is going to be cut short. You worthy of death. Now, chastise Paul for saying this. Tell him he's wrong for saying you worthy of death if you do these things. You're not. You're going to agree with Paul. That's your hero. Mm -hmm. But if you agree with Paul, then you agree with the law because the law told you not to do these things. So the law didn't kill you. The law saved your life. So the letter killer can't mean that. The letter killer can't mean the law kills you. That's right. The law is bad. That doesn't make any sense. The law say you worthy of death if you break the law, according to the same author. Come on, guys. That's why I say sophisticated Christians, because a sophisticated Christian would understand what I'm saying, respect my mind enough to know that that's a good point, and talk to me on a level. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't just ignore what I said and run to the next thing. Right. If the letter killeth means the law is bad for you and kills you, then why do you deserve to die for breaking the law? According to the same author. You didn't think this through. Uh -huh. You didn't, you did not think this, that finger. Yeah. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think this through. You was hoping that was true, but you didn't study enough to see if that was true. That's an improper approach to 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. According to Paul. That's right. The letter killeth does not mean that the law is bad and kills you. Leave the law alone. It doesn't mean that. It can't mean that. Because the same author is telling you if you break the law, you deserve to die. Well, now, wait a minute. What? What do I do with that? Romans 6 and 1. Mm -hmm. It's the book of Romans. It's a lot here. Y'all are not as versed in Paul as you say you are. Y'all are versed in Christianity. Y'all don't even love Paul like you say you do. That's, I contend. Y'all don't even love Paul like you say you do. Because you're not familiar with everything he said. You love Christianity. Read that, Romans 6 and 1. God, Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue with sin? That grace may abound. Shall we continue to break the law so that grace can flourish? Creflo Dollar thinks you should. He said, attempting to keep the law is disrespectful to Christ. Christ came to offer us grace for sinning, and here you are trying not to sin by keeping the law. You're disrespecting Christ. Even the Ten Commandments. He said that. Even the Ten Commandments. So believing in one God, disrespect Christ. Keeping the Sabbath, disrespect Christ. Honoring your parents, disrespect Christ. Not uh, coveting your neighbor's possession, disrespects Christ. Not being a thief, disrespects Christ. Not lying, disrespects Christ. So go ahead and do these things so grace can activate. Does Paul teach that? A lot. Paul, a lot of one. He, he teach the opposite of that, brothers. Right. Uh, somebody on the clubhouse want to say something. I'm going to turn the volume up on the clubhouse real quick. Go ahead, Yaiqua. Okay. I got a precept for you, too, I want. This is exactly what you said, because they think that the law is what kills us, right? And Paul taught this. Like you said, they're not really versed in Paul, as they say this, because Paul taught the total opposite. Like Paul taught the total opposite in Romans 7. And I'm gonna start at 16. And there, can they hear me on, the, on YouTube and everything? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, kind of, and it uh, reads. If uh, where I want to start at? Uh, da, 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 I just had okay, verse 16. Yeah. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Right. Now then, mm -hmm. it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So if I consent to the law and do the things that's in the law, that's good. But when I go off, that's the sin that's no good. So it's the sin that's going to kill you, not the law. Mm. Mm. Y'all brothers understand that? Come on. 
Sin, the wages of sin is death. Not the wages of the law is death. So the letter killeth, how Yaquab eloquently put it, it cannot mean the law kills you. So it must be a better way to look at this and there must be an understanding and that requires an instructor. A lot of y'all don't want a teacher. Me, I need a teacher. I hate puzzles. My personality type, I don't like puzzles. I don't like figuring things out. I'd rather know exactly what to do and do that and exert my effort, not in figuring out what to do, but exert my effort in perfectly executing what to do. That's what kind of person I am, right? I don't, I don't want to figure out nothing. Tell me exactly what I need to do, and I'm going to go do it to, to, the, to the highest standard. That's why I'd rather exert my energy. I don't want to waste time, right? Y'all don't want a teacher. A lot of y'all kind of don't like the idea of somebody your same age, your same status. Teaching, your same race. Your same race teaching you about God. It's uncomfortable for you and you would rather teach yourself so that you don't have to feel that way. That's unwise. The letter killeth is a complex concept and it requires somebody that has more than adequate biblical knowledge to explain what's being said because the not only are we dealing with translation, we're dealing with King's English and we're dealing with the words of Paul and Paul is very verbose. He says a lot to say something simple. That's just who he is, okay? He's a super scholar. He's a doctor of the law. He's very royal in his speech. So it's very difficult to understand sometimes. That's why you get in class and bow your ear down to an instructor, just like everybody on this stage had to do, okay? I'm not special. I had to do the same thing for many years to know the little bit that I know now. So what I'm saying is this, Romans 6 and 1, read that. Unmute, unmute on the clubhouse for me, kid. Kind of the one. It's Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue with sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. Mm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? I thought the letter killed it. Mm hmm you can't live in sin because that's death. You got to die to sin. But I thought the letter kill it. The letter teaches you how not to sin. This is the same author. Right. We're not going to stay in sin so grace can activate. No, we dead to sin. We don't live that way anymore. We do what's right. We keep the commandments. This is already too high for the guy asking why you don't put people to death for being a sodomite? Why you don't put people to death for being a murderer now? Why you don't put people to death for being in different religions now? But Christ said to do that. He said, Matthew 23 and 1, whatever the scribes and Pharisees say, do it. He even had the understanding, but don't do it as them because they say and do not. He understood that part, but he didn't understand why we don't execute the capital punishments anymore. Let's look at some of them. Go to Deuteronomy uh 17 and 2. Just real quick for reference. We're going to get a couple. Ain't going to be too many. It's Tuesday night. We're not going to do too many. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, Salakia. Let me go ahead and unmute on the clubhouse. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17 and verse 2. And it reads... If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hateth wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord, and transgressing his covenant, and have gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun, or moon, or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee that thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel. 
Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Now that's the Bible. That's the Bible. It says that. Guess what? That's right. Give me a... Uh, Give me uh, Exodus 21, 12. Give me Exodus 21, 12. Somebody read that. On the book of Exodus, is 21 and verse 12. He that smites a man so that he die shall, shall be surely put to death. That's right. Be afraid to strike your brother down and murder him because you're going to die. You're not getting away with that. Okay? Go to Exodus 21, 16. Kind of book of Exodus chapter 21. Exodus chapter 21 and verse 16. And he that steals a man and salleth him, where if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And if you're a slave trader, you're dying. You take a man's freedom, you ruin his life, you die. Take him from his family, put him into servile work in a land far off, getting his back whipped in. You the reason that that happened to him? You die. And guess what? That's right. Deserve it. Deuteronomy 19 15. Somebody read that. Kind of one. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, and verse 15. It says, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for a sin. And if any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. Jump down to 17. Kind of the one. It says, then both the men. Oh, you want 16? No, if, just, it's, the okay, point is if there's a false witness and there's a disagreement. Read 17. Right. Then both the men between whom the uh, controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and but and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall he do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shall thou put the evil away from among you. So yeah, you 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 bear false witness on me and if whatever you said was incurred death on me, you die. Got what you get. Read on. Kind of the one. In verse 21, and thy eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life. Eye for eye, two for two, hand for hand, foot for foot. That's the way the Lord had it set up, man. I'm not about to deny that that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You not See, that's the thing. I'm fine with that. Because if the Israelites would have feared that and kept the law, we'd have been the top nation to this very day, running the whole That's right. Earth. The earth would have been a paradise. God's law would have been the law of the whole planet. I'm fine with this. But if you're sophisticated, you would ask me, then why aren't you doing that now? Do you have a reason why you're not keeping these laws better statement why you're not keeping these statutes mm -hmm. I'll tell you why 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9 Christ has a purpose the, the sacrifice of his life was to absolve you of things that Moses law under two or three witnesses would have had to have you killed for but because we have Christ and acknowledge his sacrifice, we can be absolved of even those things and have another chance. That's the purpose of Christ. Without that sacrifice, you do not have that chance. Old Testament only y'all bugged out. Ain't no way you are gonna show me how you don't have to keep them laws. We like to come at you with sacrifice. We like to we like to come at you with sacrifice. Like, yo, you, you Old Testament only? Where are you sacrificing that? And brothers, mm -hmm. we have a sophisticated answer for that. 
I, I would rather have obedience than sacrifice. Uh, when I brought your fathers out of Egypt, I taught them nothing concerning sacrifice but obedience. That's Jeremiah. The sophisticated OT only knows that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you that. But why you didn't put that man to death when he bear false witness? And the judgment for that false witness was for that brother to die. Why you didn't put that sodomite to death that be among you? Hmm? You was a former idolater before you learned you was an Israelite. What justifies you for being able to come into the understanding? Because according to your own law, you can never come around. Some of y'all is uncircumcised. How y'all coming around? Yeah, you don't have, there's judgments for a lot of this stuff. You don't have the answer. SOT only brothers that work on the Sabbath. You know you're supposed to die. You know it, but you, you, don't, you don't have the answer. Okay? Us as Christians and believers in the Son of the Most High, through the Spirit, Joseph's biological son, the Most High's spiritual son, all right, the perfect one of what the, the only begotten one of a kind son. That's what only begotten means, one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Because of his sacrifice and our acknowledgement of it, brothers can repent of things that we're supposed to be excommunicated, killed for, cut off from the people for. And that's a beautiful thing. It's sure. my, you don't understand that because you teach that Christ didn't really die. Y'all teach that it was made to look like he died, but that was someone else. You learn that from the Gnostic Gospels, mm -hmm. which are older than Islam. Right. Catholicism is older than Islam. Admit this. So the Gnostic Gospels, the treaties of Peter, the, 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 the book of Thomas and all of that was out in the earth. And you've adopted some of those scriptures and weaved it into your Quran as a revelation when we even know that those are for right come on guys that that's the kind of conversation you got to have in a fair situation because saying that on one of these stages you getting punted like a football out of there but it's true you understand first corinthians 6 and 9 i'm gonna explain to you why we don't take an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth why we don't kill you now first corinthians 6 and 9 go on the book of first corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revolvers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. And such were some of you. This is the point. Move for a minute, y'all. I'm going to just say something real quick. This is the point. Such were some of you. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the same author who believes you're supposed to die for being a fornicator, being an idolater, being an adulterer, being a sodomite, or being a thief. Being a covetous one, being a drunkard, being a reviler, being an extortioner. He said you should die and you deserve that. The same author said that. But he went on to say, and such were some of you. That means you're still alive even after having done these things. How do we justify them being alive? Read it, y'all. Come on, out of one. But you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified. In the, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. That's how you're still alive. The sacrifice of Christ is how you're still alive. So when it says the letter killeth, what's really being said is the judgments of the law kill you and require you to die. But the spirit makes you alive. Now let's go back to 2 Corinthians 3 and 6 with that understanding. Now that we have Christ, we can be justified of things that we deserve to die for. And because of that, we have a second chance. Read that. Kind of the one. So you want me to start back at the top? Yeah. Kind. 
This is 2 Corinthians 3 at the top. Do we again to command ourselves or need we? No, do we begin again? But just, we, just, just jump down to um, verse 5. Kind of the one to lock you. Kind. Verse 5. Not that we are su sufficient of ourselves to think anything as our, ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. I'm not here to kill you for being a sinner to teach the man next to you not to do that. You, you see what I'm saying, Mike? I'm not here. Oh, that, dude's a, that dude's a sodomite. Yo, y'all can't live like this. Take him to the gates. Break his head. Now y'all going to learn not to do that because you see what's going to happen to you. That's going to make you act right. No, that's written on a tablet of stone. Mm -hmm. You really supposed to say, I was like that, but that's wrong. And I know that now. And I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't need to be forced not to do it. I don't want to do that anymore. Now that's written on your heart. It's easy. It, 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 how long did that take? That took 58 minutes. It's easy. Right. It take a second to explain it. You got to understand. So you have to have the lesson. It's not easy to do this on these clubhouse streets, man. It's not easy to do this in these debates where the Christian just waiting for his chance to talk. He bring up 17 subjects. Forget what I just said. Don't address none of that. We already got to move to the next point. And if I, if I don't address... What he most recently said, it looks like I'm running away when I was trying to teach something. It's difficult. But it's easy in class. That's what camp is good. Join a camp. They got classes. Pick a body. Sit down. Learn the Bible. For as much as ye are manif manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. It's written on your heart. I'm not going to be a sodomite because that's wrong. Not because uh, Yara all and Darak grabbed me and broke my head with stones while Micaiah read the scripture. I'm not obedient because I'm scared of them. I'm obedient because I'm scared of God and I want to change. Now it's written on my heart. The letter killeth, but the spirit maketh us alive. John 6 and 63. See, John 6 and 63. I wouldn't have to be taught like this if I would have listened to Christ in the first place who was telling me not to do this stuff. But because he died, my disobedience can be justified and I have another chance. The letter says I must die. Not thou shalt not kill says I must die. Thou shalt not kill told me not to be a murderer. If I was doing that law, which Christ taught, he taught that law specifically, thou shalt not murder. If I was keeping that law, I wouldn't even be in fear of the judgment. But because I broke that law, now I have to fear the judgment that comes with it. That's the part of the letter that kills. See what I'm saying? John 6 and 63. John this is the book. Salakia. This is the book of John, chapter six and verse sixty-three, and it reads: "It is the spirit that quickeneth; the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life." Read the next red words. Con, but there are some of you that believe not. This is the problem. Christ taught the commandments and told you to do everything the scribes and the Pharisees would command you to do. He did. Straight like that. Pharisees say, don't be a sodomite. Christ said, listen to them. Keep the Sabbath. Listen to them. You don't see Christ interfering with any public execution of anybody. It's not recorded. You telling me that in Christ's 33 years, nobody was getting put to death according to the law. <sighs> People was getting murked out. 
Christ showed mercy. When the woman that was caught in adultery was brought before him, they said, what should we do? They asked him. They gave the judgment to him. But if they was going to grab that woman and take her to the uh, gates of the city and break her head with stones, I do not believe that Yahweh would have manifested over there and said, stop, don't do this. I don't think Paul would have had a problem with it. You're not supposed to be an adulteress. They killed her. Mm, I wish they hadn't, but she shouldn't have done that. That's what Paul would have said. Now she got the recompense, which was meat. For her sin. She's worthy of death. But. And then he would have went down to the synagogue. And talked to the judges. Can y'all stop this style of teaching. Christ died. It's no longer a need for you to destroy these people. They can repent. Give them a chance. Teach them properly. Your hearts are so hard. You, you're not understanding what prophecy said was going to come. That's I believe that's what he would have done. When they thought Stephen committed blasphemy, they broke his head. And Paul put his garment on the ground and said, I'm witness to this. Looking back, he regrets it. But in that moment, he thought he had the zeal, which was righteous, even so much that he persecuted the church. He tell you that in Philippians. These topics had to be discussed in depth. It's not something you could just skim over, okay? So to make a long story short, because it's now 10 o'clock, the letter killeth means the law has judgments in it that can lead to you dying. But Christ's teachings is life, even for those that deserve death. Go to Hebrews 10 and 26, and let's figure out how to apply this. This is the book of hey, go ahead, King. Go ahead, one, you got it. Yo, who's that? Hold on one second. Somebody at my door. All right, Ty. Ty. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't want y'all go up. I don't mind, guy. Under the one, and that's deep. That's deep. People, people, people always, people always want to want to. People always want to go to Paul's letters and isolate certain wordings, not understanding that Paul's all is never with the law, right? Paul's all is never with the law. Every time Paul goes into it, y'all hear him talk about righteousness. That righteousness without the law is made manifest. Well, yeah, you could be righteous through Christ, right? He always goes into what the the the, uh, the law of sin and death, right? How that's how that's your enemy, the law of sin and death. Yes, because if you die, guess what you can't do. Let me let me see that in the chat, on, on the clubhouse chat, and the, and the YouTube chat. If you if somebody 
judges you, what can't you do? Right? Hey, David, David said this a bunch of times to the most I got. Right? Hey, Salaki. Hey, Derek, you off mute? Are you off mute on the uh, clubhouse? Shaquat said he can't hear. Hey, mute. Hey, hey, unmute, Edwin. What is wrong with Esau? This dude is turning my doorknob only to say, oh, man, I, I think I'm at the wrong house. Who, who, what is wrong with you, man? It was almost all over, man. Let's let's continue. Death. 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 Hey. So that's that's an example right there. Hey, Salakia. Hey, 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 Salakia, real quick, Adawan. I know we want to, I want to end this, but let me, uh, let me unmute on the clubhouse. I apologize. Hey, hey, this, understand this. We got to understand the practicality of the law, okay? Adawan, I'm going to give two quick examples. Adawan just said that he goes downstairs and somebody's turning at his doorknob, all right? Somebody's turning, talking about they think they're at the wrong house, okay? Hey, hey, let me explain something to you, okay? You run up in a man's house, okay, and you attempt to steal, all right, you may end up dead, okay, all right, you may end up dead, you, you, you don't even have to get caught, okay, stealing and brought to the judges, okay, to be put to death in that circumstance, in this day and age, the wages of sin is still death, we got to understand how practical that is, I eat pork, I eat shrimp, crab, and lobster, Okay, I can die from medical complications. That's real. Okay, the law is practical. The wages of sin is death. You come to my door, okay, at 10 o'clock at night, all right, turning on a doorknob, all right, you may end up stinking, okay, laying dead. The wages of sin is death, okay? And the law is very practical. We got to understand this thing, man. Yeah, we have to have mercy on our brothers and sisters, okay, but you can still be put to death. Okay, if you're committing sin, okay. Hey, go ahead, Adam. Yo, man, it's wild out here, man. I'm just telling you, man. It's wild out here, man. It's wild out here, man. But you gotta maintain your temper too. You can't get, you know, people make mistakes. But what the hell? God, Adam. What the God, hell? Adam. Oh, you turn that doorknob like, oh, you changed the game. Now it's like. I'm on something else. But listen, what, where was we at? We was at Hebrews 10 16. and uh, 26. Read that for the people. Hebrews 10, 26. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remain of no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful look for judge of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises Moses' law dieth without mercy under two or three witnesses. Do you see? You don't get to sin willfully. You still go and die. Christ mm -hmm. didn't die for you to just do whatever you want. He's not a life vest. And then you decided to jump into the water with the sharks. Like, no. He's not a parachute. I'm, I'm choosing to jump out the plane, but I got my parachute. It does, it's not... Christ is more of a, a, a umbrella or, or a savior is the best word because when you fall into that pit, he can get you out. Not, he's not there for you to uh, jump in the pit and then look up. Are you going to get me? It's, it's, right. it, it, it should not be approached that way. Matters of repentance should not be handled like that. All right. Don't invoke Christ like that. Don't use him that way. All right. He deserves better than that. And he died. A horrific death, not for you to make light of it by I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Well, that means that you're covered in the blood of somebody who was tortured to death. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Be, be more careful how you say that. Okay. Uh, because under two or three witnesses, you would die without mercy under Moses' law. See that? But that doesn't mean just because Christ is here, you're still not gonna die if you choose to sin. Keep reading, verse 29. Kind of the one. 29, it says, how much sore punishment suppose ye should he be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot the son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherein he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. That means you did 
your wickedness anyway. Mm -hmm. Even though you had grace offered to you, you still chose to be wicked. That's trotting, that's trotting, slacky, that's trotting underfoot the, 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 the sacrifice of Christ. You're stomping all over it. That's right. And it means that you count the blood of the covenant an unholy thing. You count Christ's blood unholy. It's not special. Being covered in the blood of Jesus is nothing. It's like putting on a football helmet. I'm all right. That's, all right. That's not the way you're supposed to approach Christ's sacrifice. And Paul disagrees with you because he told you straight up, if you commit any sins, you deserve to die. Mm -hmm. You're worthy of death. The only thing that's saving you from uh, being put to death is being washed in that blood. But you cannot count that blood an unholy thing. You can't willfully sin. That's disrespectful to Christ. And there's no Christian that can debate that. And whenever we go to Hebrews 10 and 26, y'all want to escape quickly. Mm -hmm. Because Hebrews 10, 26 by itself uh, cuts the doctrine of I don't have to keep the commandments because you do have to keep the commandments because you have to uh, uh, not willfully sin. And to not sin is to keep the commandments. All right. Excuse me, y'all. I'm a little on edge, man. This nigga turned my doorknob, man. God, that a <laughs> hey, it's a lot. Yeah. Get it. But hey. look. Hey, 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 God, I don't want I'm, I'm going to tell you something I've been thinking about. Hey, Salakia, let me, I keep forgetting to unmute for the clubhouse. Hey, but something I've been thinking about, you know, uh, lately is I was a simple minded Christian. Okay. I was the type of Christian, okay, that, that literally sat there, okay, and took in everything that Pastor said. I didn't study nothing. Okay. And there's a lot of simple minded Christians out there. And that's why you have to, you know, explain what sin is, okay, you know, which is First John chapter 3 and verse 4. You have to explain that, Adam, one, because a lot of them, they, they, they believe, okay, that sinning and it's just doing something, okay, that is considered to be bad, like running a red light, okay, or, or, or saying a so-called curse word, okay, or whatever the case may be. They don't understand what sin is. I was one of them, okay? You tell me what sin is? Hey, doing something bad. That's what that thing is. So, you know, a lot of so-called Christians, when they read this right here, that Adawan, I don't believe they're under the understanding for if we sin willfully, okay? They don't understand, okay, that sin is the transgression of the law, according to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, okay? A lot of people won't admit that, but I was the simplest of the Christians. I didn't read nothing. I listened to the doggone message, Okay, I forgot about that thing on Monday morning and was the wickedest nigga, okay, mm -hmm. on earth. All right. After that, you know, wasn't you know what I mean? I'm 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 baptized. I was I, I was bad. I was one of the brothers. I was baptized. I was baptized at mm -hmm. 11 years old. I thought I was going to heaven, man. Right. Okay. That's how simple-minded a lot of our brothers and sisters are. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got a lot of simple-minded brothers and sisters. Now I'm not knocking them because they don't know. That's why. You know, Christ said, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. They, we, we literally don't know what we're doing. We literally have zero understanding. Okay. And I know, I, I know we got a lot of people, okay, that's listening in. All right. That's on the YouTube. All right. They might not want to admit it, but you was that simple minded Christian too. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice of sins. What can you do now? Who are you gonna? What, what can you say? You, you still on mute, Adam? Oh, the clubhouse didn't hear me. I said, "What can you do now? What can you say?" It, it seemed like the brother on, is talking on a clubhouse too. That's Israel. I can't hear you. I, I got the volume all the way down. Was Israel saying something? Kind of one. Kind right. of one. Let me turn my volume up so he can be heard. Hold on. Go ahead, is right. Is right. Go ahead. You on mute if you're talking. Oh, Khan, can you hear me? Yeah. Khan. All right, Khan. I was one letting back off what I don't want my kind my kind of saying. See, Christianity teaches simple mindedness. Because the, the preacher don't teach to actually read. The, see, the thing is, 
<clears throat> when when people go to church, and we all know this, when people go to church, it's, it's all uh, repetitiously. And when people go to church, they see the pastor pull one precept, two precepts, and then talk the rest of the time. So he's not showing through action to read the Bible. Hebrew Israelites have taught Christians to actually start reading the Bible. We have taught them to start reading the Bible. They didn't want to read the Bible till they seen us teaching the word and bringing out precept upon precept. Now they want to read. All Christians are simple minded. All of them. Because if they weren't, they wouldn't be Christians. You see what I'm saying? Because we give we give them precepts like Hebrews 10 and 26, like the other ones just brought out. There is no way around that. And then when you look for the definition of sin according to scripture, it tells you it's the transgression of the law. There is no way around it, but they would they would still backdoor with an excuse out of pride, with another precept out of pride, because they don't want to bow down or feel like they're bowing down to the truth or to a brother that's bringing the truth to them. So all Christianity teaches simple-mindedness because the pastors don't teach the, the, the Christians to read the Bible with repetition. Are you? Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that. Lock you out of one. All right, go ahead. Captain Yahweh is going to speak now. Cotton, I just want to um, grab a, uh, a precept uh, because, and then let me off of what was already said. And I served um, underneath a pastor, um, was a minister in the Christian church. I served for two years under this nigga. And I didn't know nothing about the Bible. I'm just going to keep it 100. I didn't know nothing. And out of one, I've, I've told Juice that I learned more in being in this camp than I ever learned inside of a church. To me, sinning as defined by the pastor who I was underneath was missing the mark. Now, what the hell is missing the mark? I don't know. But it's sin was missing the mark. And we, when going to church, and this is as a minister, I was always taught and told that we wanted to get the congregation emotional. We wanted to get them in their feelings. We didn't want to just give them scripture and give them word. We wanted to get them in their feelings. That's why whenever you go to church, what are they opening up with? They opening up with songs, songs to get you in your emotions. When the pastor is preaching, he's preaching to get in your emotions. He'll pull one, two scriptures, and then it's story time. It's how am I going to get these niggas in their feelings to want to give me money? At the end of the day, that's what it, it, it come down to. And like the Adewanium is saying, we know what sin is according to the Bible. The Bible defines what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. But now the, the problem is because Christians are simple and because we don't re read, just like the, uh, the proverb, if you want to hide something from a Negro, you put it in a book. Negroes will not read. They'll go to church for an hour, hear, the, hear a good message, feel good, feel happy, and then the next day they don't remember what the message was in the first place. But we got to get in the book and read for ourselves. And this is the precept that I want to pull. It's Luke um, chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. So the ones who know and don't do they go get it. Just like it says in James, be not many masters because we go receive, and I'm paraphrasing, we who call ourselves teachers are going to receive the greater condemnation. So we go get it. But watch this, verse 44. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. You still go get it. You not go get away. You can't say, oh, well, I didn't know. You know, you. that's why it says in um, Timothy, study to show thyself approved, a work man to God, right? You still have to get in this book and learn and read and find out what it's actually saying. 
because they still go get it. I'll finish it off. It says, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. And I'm going to yield right there. All praises. Good exegesis of scripture. Thank you for the uh, testimonial, man. So I think everybody understands what it means when we say the letter killeth. We understand that now. Um, I'm not on. We have a strong grip on the meaning of that and uh, where Paul was going when he was using that terminology. Because the letter does kill in the sense that according to the letter of the law, some of you sinners should be dead right now. That's right. But because we have Christ, that's why you are alive. That's why I'm here to teach you that you can still get the kingdom, but you got to change. That's the whole message of Paul. And it's been greatly distorted by the church, man. And I'm glad we're here now with the technology and, um, you know, just having brothers of like-minded so that we can clear all that nonsense up. Khan? Khan at a one. Khan at a one. Hey, uh, I, don't, I don't have much more. I want to turn it over to the uh, natural host of this show, and I want to just make sure my perimeter is good, man. So I'm going to be back in a second, okay? Khan, Khan. The one out of one. Hey, Khan. Hey, hey, we get ready to close it out here in a minute. Hey, but hey, let's go to um, Colossians chapter uh, two and verse thirteen real quick. Okay, hey, we um we brought this out last week. Okay, but just to you know, kind of land me back on what Adewan okay was bringing out. Okay, and bring a little bit more clarity. Okay, you know, to to to, to people's understand. Hey, hey, can brothers and sisters hear me? Because I hear somewhat of an echo. Okay, uh, coming from the clubhouse. Can brothers and sisters hear me or no? Hey, 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 give me a uh, a seven in the chat if brothers and sisters can hear me. Okay. Can you hear me, y'all are all? Con, I don't want loud and clear. Okay, con, con, con. Hey, let's go to, uh, read that, read that. Because he, he, here's the thing. Okay, just like Adewan was saying, okay, there were certain sins, there were certain sins according to the law, all right, that was automatic, okay, death, okay, automatic death, all right, you couldn't get around homosexuality, all right, you couldn't get around uh, murder, you know what I mean, you couldn't get around these sins, you couldn't get around breaking the Sabbath day. All right, so there were automatic sins, okay, that brought death. All right, so go ahead and bring that out. Colossians chapter two. All right, in verse thirteen. Kind of the ones with Colossians chapter two and verse thirteen. And uh -huh. you, being dead in your sins, Salakia, Salakia. Okay, so when it says and you being dead in your sins. All right, what that translates into is, all right, once you commit one of those sins, all right, that was punishable by death, you're already dead. You're just awaiting the execution, all right, of that punishment. So you being already dead in your sins, read on. And the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him? Uh -huh. I was forgiving you all trespasses. All right. And the uncircumcision, all right, of your flesh. All right. Now, you know, a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters, they try to use this uh, circumcision, okay, uh, uh, this circumcision, uh, uncircumcision word, okay, or circumcision alone, okay, as some sort of spiritual thing, okay? It means exactly what it says, okay? If a brother or a sister was uncircumcised, okay, according to the promise, all right, to um, or the covenant to Abraham, okay, and according to, according to the law given by Moses, all right, that brother or sister could not be allowed into the congregation. They were cast out. If you missed that thing on the eighth day, you were no longer considered to be a part of the nation of Israel, okay? So this is two different things. It's saying that if you sin, okay, if you committed a sin that was punishable by death, 
And if you are uncircumcised, okay, according to the law, all right, I want you to read that again, King. Read it again. John out of one. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him. So he has quickened together these things with him. Okay? He took these things, all right, to the cross with him. Read on. Read with on, him, King. Having forgiven you all trespasses. I haven't forgiven you all trespasses, okay? Not just the sins, okay, that you were doggone slaughtering, uh, you know, bulls, goats, and rams for, okay? You know what I mean? He's not just a sacrificial lamb for them, but also uh, the sins punishable by death. And also, you know, if you're uncircumcised, all right? All right, read on, read 14. Continue verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was uh -huh. against us. All right, so what are ordinances? Okay, all right, what are ordinances? Ordinances how we how we go about executing a law. Okay, that's how you go about executing it. All right, you go about. We're talking about nailing. Okay, to the cross. All right, how you go ahead and stone a man. OK, like we read earlier, OK, if that person committed a sin punishable by death. OK, how you put a brother to death all right, for breaking the Sabbath day, those ordinances right there, OK, are being put to death without Messiah. Read on. John letter one, which was contrary to us uh -huh. and, and took it out of the way. Right, nailing it to his cross, nailing those to the cross. Okay, nailing those things to the cross. All right, so now we have grace, all right, through our Lord and Savior. All right, we have a grace period, all right, a time to come back to this law. Okay, all right, and time, okay, to get to know Christ. We brought this out last week, we didn't know Christ. All right. As the brother uh, Yahweh that was bringing out, the brother Israel was bringing out and that I mentioned earlier, we really didn't know Christ. So coming into this truth, we're also being introduced to the Hamashiach Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls Christ, Jesus Christ. We're being introduced to him as well. So we have to keep, OK, the laws, the statutes and commandments. OK, get um, 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 Matthew chapter um um 19 and 16 real quick okay get matthew 19 and 16. Okay. Look at matthew to the 19 and verse 16. oh my bad is the rock that no go, hey, go ahead king got another one the matthew to chapter 19 and verse 16 and uh -huh. behold one came and said unto him good master what good thing shall i do that i may have eternal life right and he said unto him all right so this is this is a a, a young levite coming to christ and he's asking Christ, what do I got to do, all right, to get the kingdom of heaven, to get eternal life? This is simple right here. What did Christ say, Yarraal? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. All right. He says, if you were to enter into life, keep the commandments. Okay, this is how you receive eternal life. Read on. Read on, y'all. Count out of one. He said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. He said, what, what did Christ say? Thou shalt do no murder. <laughs> That's in the law. Uh, Exodus 20, read on. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's in the law. Exodus 20, read on. Thou shalt not steal. That's in the law. Exodus 20. Read on. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Hey, what, what, what's going on here, man? Okay. Christ is explaining to you what you got to do, okay, to inherit eternal life. Okay. He's explaining that thing to you. All right. But what we got to understand, 
okay, is that in doing so, okay, in keeping the law, all right, and also having faith in Christ, okay, that we have a grace period now, okay, to come back to these things, mm -hmm. all right, and if we screw up, all right, and we commit sin, even sins that are punishable by death, all right, I don't know why Israel is saying that we're muted up on the uh, YouTube are, or if he's saying all, Y'all are all, both your mics can't be open. You have to close oh, okay. one. All right, go ahead. All right, come Con, 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 con. You know, hey, I was just saying, we got to come back to Christ, okay, you know, and understand what that grace period is. A gr that gr grace, what is grace? It, it is a period of time, all right, for you to get something together. All right? There's no such thing as an everlasting grace. Okay? That time period is going to be over with. And what we got to understand is Hebrew 10 and 26 is still in effect because if you continue to sin and you don't repent from that thing and you don't turn back to these laws, Christ is going to put you to death. The schoolmaster's coming back to put you to death. And this time you're going to go into the lake of fire, okay, and your spirit is going to burn forever. And there's no coming back from that thing. That's the grace period. It makes so much sense. Okay? It, 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 it's not, you know, hey, you know, I, I got baptized. Or, I, I, you know, I believe, you know, you know I, I believe on Christ's name. And now, you know, I can do whatever the hell I want to do. Okay? And, and nothing's going to happen to me. That don't even work in your own households. If your kid continues to be bad, what you gonna do? Hey, get, hey y'all, give me that in um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter eight and verse five. Your 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 kid is gonna get dealt with. Well, the Most High is dealing with us in the same manner. Deuteronomy eight and five, and then I'm gonna yield, all right, so we can uh, close this thing out. Gun the, the book of Deuteronomy chapter eight and verse five. Uh huh. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that. As a man chastens his son, so right. the Lord thy God chastens thee. All right, so as a man chastises his own son, so does the Most High chastise us. He chastises the nation of Israel in the same manner, okay? But he's given us a grace period through his son all right, to get this thing right. Come back to these law, statutes, and commandments, and to get to know our Messiah, all right? We, we, we didn't know him in Christianity. We, we really didn't know him. To understand, okay, his grace and mercy and have faith in him, he's going to come back here and redeem us from our enemies, man. Okay? So, so the Adewan, Adewan Yahweh all is absolutely right. Okay? You know, we got we to gotta be, you know, very attentive and diligent when we're reading, okay, Paul's letters, man. Okay? We got to study in this thing. Okay? Understand sometimes, you know, we're reading that King's English, Okay? And this mm -hmm. thing can be a serious stumbling block, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And it'll put you to death. All right. If you're not careful. All right. Hey, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and yield. Paul's letters can get you killed, man. We have that lesson. That's right, Adwan. We have that lesson. Paul's letters could get you killed. Um, like uh, we got a uh, captain. Is Ryan want to say something on the clubhouse? I'm going to turn the mic up. I'm going to mute up for him. Go ahead, Ark. I kind of the one. I just wanted to uh, bring out something real quick. Um, um, the lesson that uh, the other one had brought out uh, for blowing of the trumpets, he mentioned uh, how I just want to throw this in there real quick. He mentioned how uh, we don't do the sacrifice anymore, and Christ is our sacrifice. And then the other one, my guy was just talking about how Christ is our sacrifice, and we got to look to Christ. What I wanted to address is how Christians take that we're not under the law the wrong way. We Christ is our sacrifice, and to prove that you go to Hebrews 10, this is my go-to chapter to prove that Christ is our sacrifice. The reason why they say, they say, well, y'all don't keep all the commandments. Y'all don't sacrifice lambs and goats and all this and that. Hebrews 10 addresses that. Hebrews 10 lets us know that Christ is that sacrifice. And so that's the sacrificial part of the law that is talking about. It doesn't make a no, it doesn't annul the rest of the law. It doesn't annul loving your brother as yourself, not committing adultery with your brother's wife. It doesn't annul that. It's talking about the sacrifices. 
So when we do these high holy days, the sacrificial part is done by Christ. We handle the rest of it. You see what I'm saying? These are commandments. So I just wanted to address the sacrificial part when it comes to Christ. This is what he came. You see what I'm saying? These are the commandments. But what was a lamb used for? Other than eating it, what was a lamb used for? A sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand that. To you have to understand in totality what you're saying when you say, "Yes, he's the Lamb of God." To know what his, the whole purpose of him coming was for. All right, are you? The water for that, Ock. Appreciate that input, man. The word is going out strong and it's making sense. So just a quick recap. We explained in the beginning that, yes, the Bible does pronounce uh, judgments. All right. But it is not hypocritical in how it does that. Those judgments still stand. The only reason that they're not being enacted is because there is a sacrifice in place of your life. So Christ gave his life to save yours, but you cannot uh, trample on that sacrifice uh, by being careless with how you live. And the way you're supposed to live is according to the law because the commandments are life. And I want, I want to show that. All right. Go to the book of Deuteronomy. And I want to tell you something about the Most High. The Most High don't like puzzles either. He speaks to you plain. Go to Deuteronomy 30 and read verse 19 for me. God and why. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. And it reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. The Lord said, choose life. Go to Sirach 15, 16. The Lord said, choose life. He gave you the quiz. These are the two choices, life and death. The right answer is life. Pick that one. That's what he did. Mm. And I also want to tell you, he said how he calls heaven and earth against you, right? To call heaven against you is because there are three that bear record in heaven. And your actions are recorded. So that's also spiritual for you to understand. We sound like 15 and 16. This is the book of Sirach. Hey, go ahead, King. Go. go this is the book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 16. Give and take and sanctify thy soul, for there is no seeking of dainties in the grave. Uh, Sirach 15 and... No, no, I don't want. That was, that was chapter 14. The book of Sirach, chapter 15. Read 15. Read 15 first. Count out of one. This book is a rack chapter 15 and verse 15. If thou will to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness, he has set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. See how see how the Lord talks to you? He has set water and fire in front of you. Stretch forth your hand to whichever you like. Somebody got to turn it back to the computer. Got some feedback. I'm going to say that again. The Lord said, I put water and fire in front of you. Stretch forward your hand to that which you prefer. He's giving you a choice, man. You want to play with fire? That's you. That's your choice. But the judgment is set for when you do that. And that's the way the most high deals. Okay. So we have to choose life. The Lord said, choose life. That's fire and water right in front of you. He's telling you to choose life. You have that option. So the commandments are life. The commandments are not death. Your misinterpretation of Paul's uh, exegesis, because Paul is really interpreting scripture when he's teaching. What you reading when you read the epistles is somebody that's an expert on the law and understands Christ teaching you how to live. What we like to do is we like to take the epistle for what it is and make it equal to the law when the epistle is based on the law. So it's here. The law is the centerpiece, right? Christ yielded to the law because he kept it. 
He had his fringes on, all that. We can get you the scriptures, okay? When the apostles come with their uh, epistles, think of this as like you listening to me right now. If somebody was to record me now for all time's sake and write down my words, it would simply say, Brother Joel says, keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Because keeping the commandments is not enough because breaking the commandments incurs death and we are all worthy of death. However, by having faith in Christ, we can be justified of things that the commandments could not justify us. See that? My words don't become greater than the law. They're in wow. reference. To, they're in reference to the law. And we got to start looking at the epistles like that, man. Um, if y'all brothers want to say anything else, y'all got it. I'm a you. La I don't want to say great lesson and the water for that. Don, a hey, great lesson there, Adawan. Thank you, Akim. I appreciate it, man. Sorry about the confusion, man. Some Edomite walking through the neighborhood, ringing my doorbell, trying my doorknob. Oh, sorry, man. I'm at the wrong house going in his phone. Man, it was almost the end of the day, man. Like, it's just crazy out here. Con at a one. Hey, uh, hey, Dirac, can we blow that up a little bit, King? And the sister, and the sister Mina Israel, it's like she understands. Okay, the sister says, when they said Paul letters all right, can get you killed, it is because of the understanding of this of this message. Okay. You know, they 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 have no clue, okay? But Paul's letters will definitely get you killed if you don't understand, okay, you know what he's saying, and if you don't have an understanding of the law itself. Paul speaks to them that know the law. All right, he's a doctor of the law. All right. You know, a lot of our, our, our Christian brothers and sisters, all right, they're taught not to go back into the Old Testament because it's irrelevant. Okay, pick up what Christ comes onto the scene, okay, because all is forgiven and all things are made clean now. Okay, so you don't need to be in that law. Okay. What Creflo say, he said, he said, hey, Christ came all right, to free me from the big tent. All right. Oh man, I about all gonna cringe when I saw that thing. Okay, but um, if you look at our feast day calendar here, hey, the rock, hey, 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 uh, hey that thing's that that thing's small, uh, you're gonna have to dog on uh, square that away. So, so the uh, I apologize, I, I can't, I can't. Hey, it sounds like it's right, is trying to say something. I can't hear the brother on the on the uh, YouTube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn my volume up and mute so that Israel can speak. Give me one second. Okay. All right, Israel, Israel, go ahead. Con, con, I don't want. Now, I just wanted to say, the sister was asking, she was asking about uh, why why we say uh, Paul's letters will get you killed. Um, and I'm going to just read that precept for real quick, and, and I'm going to let you have it. It's uh, 2 Peter 3 and uh, 15. It says, uh, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, as according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So it's letting me know. If you're the, the unlearned are the ones that rest on their understanding of what they think Paul is saying, but it leads them to destruction because they have the wrong understanding. All right. But I just want to address that because the, the, the sister was asking a question. And I think you thought that she was uh, saying that she, you know, that she knew. But I, you, I, you. Con, con, con. Oh, praises. Hold on. Let me, let me get off of the, I mean, let me uh, unmute. Kind of, kind of, kind of. So what y'all see before y'all today is the uh our, our the Sunday Thunder Feast Day calendar, right? We just we just observed the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, right? And the new moon seventh month, that high holy day, right? If y'all want to catch that lesson, it's on YouTube, right? And coming up October 4th is the day of atonement, right? 
So the Thunder will be keeping the Day of Atonement October 4th at even, right? So make sure y'all are ready and prepare for that. Uh, the other feast days that are coming up, Feast of Tabernacles, as well as the New Moon Eighth Month, right? The new feast day calendar will will be uh will be uh, given to y'all. Just give us a little time, but you know we love y'all. If y'all would like to come feast with us, hit us up at Sons of Thunder Israelites at gmail.com, right? For the Atlanta to uh, congregate with the Atlanta camp. And if you'd like to congregate with the North Carolina camp, it's Sons of Thunder Israelites NC at gmail.com. Right, so you brothers and sisters, man, if y'all are uh, interested, go ahead, email us and let us know how many people you bring in. All right, we love y'all dearly. And with that, you know, I let the Adawan close it out. All right, all praises. Uh, we have a guest on stage. Uh, his, his name is Truth. Uh, do you have a question or a comment? You don't need guest on stage. Great lesson, by the way. Uh, I enjoy listening to it. Um, I just want to comment on a few things. Not a few things. I just want to comment on one thing. Um, and in Romans 13, mm -hmm. Paul specifically says, starting in verse 8, Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Mm -hmm. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You should not murder, you should not steal, you should not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What is Paul saying there in your in your understanding? And I will I will mute my mic. Hey, any get um Hey, Salakia, get 2 John, okay, verse 6. Okay, get 2 John, verse 6. All right, to, to answer everyone. this brother's question. Okay, hey, go ahead and read that. Okay, this is the book of 2 John, uh, chapter 1 and verse 6. It says, and this is the love, this is love. Hey, Salakia, Salakia. So, hey, John is getting ready to explain to you, Brother Truth, what love is according to the most high power okay a lot of the times the most high power gives us the definition of words what we got to understand is we this is the king's english my 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 other one he's always telling us this is the king's english we can't take our understanding of words today what we were taught in school and the meaning of words that was given into us in this land and think we can pick the bible up which was written okay way back okay before 1600 and think we understand it with our understanding today. The scripture is going to tell us what love is according to the Bible. All right. Read that, King. Okay. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. What is love, Durop? That we walk after his commandments. Love is that we walk after the commandments, Brother Truth. All right. Now we're going to go back. OK, to Romans chapter 13 and verse eight. Mm -hmm. And with the understanding of what love is, OK, with the understanding of what love is now, we're going to insert that. OK, and, 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 and read it again and see if we can get the understanding. Go ahead, King. Can I, another one? Yeah, can I finish verse six real fast? And yeah, go ahead, King. go ahead, King. It says this is the commandment that that as ye have heard from the beginning. You should right. walk in it. Hey, hey, now read it again in its totality, King. Kind of the one. It's first, it's the second John 1 and 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So according to the Bible, love is not touchy filly, okay? Mm -hmm. All hugs, okay. All right. And, and, you know, according to our knowledge in the world, love is keeping the most high's law, statutes and commandments, because if I love my brother, all right, like I love myself, I'm not going to steal from him. I'm not going to commit adultery with his wife. I'm not going to doggone uh, kill my brother. OK, if I love the most high, I'm going to keep his Sabbath day holy. Mm -hmm. OK, if I love the most high, I'm not going to eat abominable things. Love is keeping the commandments. These are the commandments in which you heard from the beginning. And this is, we're almost at the end of the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. This ain't the Old Testament. 
We're reading the New Testament. So go back to Romans chapter uh, 13, 13, King. Got okay, it, with that understanding, now we're going to read it. Go ahead. Got Romans 13 and 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Salaki, forgive me. This is Romans 13 and 8. Owe no uh -huh. man anything but to love one another. Salakia, but to love one another, which means keep the commandments between one another. Read on. Counter the one. It says, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. All right, for he that loveth the, uh, another hath fulfilled the law. Because love is keeping the most high's law, statutes, and commandments. Right. It's not giving the brother a kiss or a hug. That's Read weird. on. Counter the one. It says, verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery. All right, so now it's bringing in the sense. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Read on. Thou shalt not kill. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not steal. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Right. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, if there is, be any other commandment, because all of the commandments together, mm -hmm. all right, hang on these two, all right? Right. All right? Loving your brother and your sister, all right, as it pertains to the law, and having no other gods before him, okay, they, they, they all, all right, come together, okay? You know what I mean? And it's a fulfillment of the law. Mm -hmm. Read on. Down to the one. It's a, it is briefly, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Mm -hmm. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's saying all the commandments. All right, when you mm -hmm. do all the commandments, you're loving your neighbor as yourself, brother. You're not going to let your brother's ox fall in the ditch. Okay, mm -hmm. even if it's on the Sabbath day, you're going to help your brother. By you not helping your brother by his ox falling in the ditch, you break the commandments. Okay? All right, so hey, brother, truth. Okay, hey, 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 do you understand now? Okay, based off that understanding. Okay. Uh, well, I just got my question. You, you asked my question pretty exegetically, and I appreciate that. So, who is, who is your brother according to scripture? Hey, that's a that's a that's a good question. Okay, yeah. we can go. We, no, we're gonna okay. go. Hey, Hey, go ahead, Durop. He uh, asked, it's the book of Leviticus, brother, chapter 19, and verse 17. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So according to, according to the scripture, the Lord that was given, right there, was classified as your neighbor is the children of thy people. Okay, so great. That's amazing. Great scripture. No praises. So hey Salaki, hey brother truth, can I bring out one more one yeah. more scripture? I want I, I want to go to I want to stay in Paul. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter nine real quick. Kind of one. Okay, we'll go to Romans chapter nine. Okay, and uh, we can start at verse three. Okay, I'll read it. I'll read it, King. All right, it reads, this is the book of Romans chapter nine and verse three. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. So this means that Paul wishes that he can take on the same burdens as Christ did. He wishes he can die all right, for the nation of Israel. All right? For I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. Now he's going to explain who his brethren are true. My kinsmen. All right. We use the, the term kinfolk today. That's my weird. kins, my kinsmen. This is his family according to blood. All right. And flesh according to the flesh who are Israelites. All right. That's, those are your brethren, okay? All right, those who are all right, your blood, okay, in your flesh, all right? Paul is making that clear right here. Your brethren are your kinsmen according to the flesh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and yield. All right, you understand that, Brother Truth? 
I'm calling you Brother Truth because that's the name you got right there. Right, 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 right. I, I got it. I got it. So can you explain what the law of Christ is in Galatians 6, 1? The, the, law, the law of Christ is the same as, I'm going to answer this quickly and make this easy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. The law of Christ is the same as God's law. But mm -hmm. when Paul is referring to the law of Christ, he's talking to the law of reconciliation and forgiveness, which is why Christ came. So the law of Moses would have you die, but the law of Christ would have you repent. That's the overarching theme. But if we're going to be specific and ask you what law did Christ come to teach, he came to teach uh, the law of his father. Go to the book of John, chapter 17. John. Uh, seven. Right, right, right. In verse 16. Okay. It's the book of John, chapter 7, and verse 16. And it says... Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but he is that sent me. So Christ is telling you right now, my doctrine is not even mine own. I didn't come to kick my own words. I didn't come to tell you how I felt about the law and God's message to mankind. I didn't come to tell you that. I came to tell you what God told me to say. That's real. So That's the true. law of Christ is the law of God. Okay. What did he tell the man? Uh, who asked, how does he get the kingdom of heaven? What did he tell him? You know that answer, Brother Truth? What did he tell that man? Where, where, can you repeat the question? What did, what did Christ tell the man uh, that asked, how do I get the kingdom of heaven? Well, I believe he said follow commandments. Okay, then. So that, But God already told you that. God already told you if, if you want to be the top nation, to receive the blessings, keep my commandments. God said, if you want to live, keep my commandments. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 1. This is the first promise for your obedience. And Christ didn't come to destroy this. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Read that. No. Go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do, and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's the first promise for your obedience. The Israelites haven't received that promise, of course, because they was disobedient. But it's promised to them. And Christ came to make sure that that promise could be fulfilled because we have no access to this unless it's through him. So the law of Christ is the law of God. But when, when Paul is talking about it, let's go there. Call the scripture in Galatians, brother. True. It's Galatians 6. Let's start at Galatians 2 first, brother. True. Let's get this understood. Let's go to Galatians 2 and read verse 16. Right. First, then we're going to go to Galatians 6. It's the book of Galatians chapter 2. In verse 16, it says, No, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. When Christians hear that, it means mm -hmm. don't keep the law. What if I said this? What if I said this, right? A red light means stop. When you see a red light, you have to stop. What does that have to do with what the green light means? It has nothing to do with it. You can't say a, a, a light on the, on the, on the uh, what do you call the thing? That, that whole unit. Traffic light? The traffic. <laughs> you right. can't say you can't say a red light on the traffic light means stop. So that means anytime you see a light on the traffic light, you have to stop. No, there's a green light and a yellow light. Well, the yellow light doesn't mean stop, but it also doesn't mean keep going. It means be careful. There's a context to everything. 
So just because the Bible says no man is justified by the law, it does not equal you don't have to do the law. That's a whole nother statement. All right. My parable was kind of rusty right there. I got to do better than that. But look, not being justified by the law is true. But that does not mean you don't have to keep the law. The law cannot justify you. True. But you have to try to keep it. Why is that also true? Because when you fall short, you can't be justified by the law. You have to be judged by it. Mm -hmm. so, what, so what does the definition of justified? You may have already answered it. If you would answer it again. But what is the definition of justify as Paul is using there? Meaning this. When we read earlier, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, a murderer can't be justified by the law. He has to die. Mm -hmm. An effeminate can't be justified by the law. He has to die. An adulterer can't be justified by the law. He has to die. An idolater can't be justified by the law. He has to die. No man can be justified by the law because we have been these things. Mm -hmm. But you know how we can be justified? By faith in Christ. Now we have a second chance to recover. That's all he's teaching. He's not teaching don't keep the law. You have made, you can't be justified by the law equal don't keep the law. That's what I was trying to do with the stoplight mm -hmm. analogy on the top of the dome. That, I, that was weak. I got to do better than that. You have made, I can't be justified by the law mean I don't have to try to keep the law. Yeah. Well, you didn't think that through. Yeah. You didn't think that through because the same author said, if you break the commandments, you should you worthy of death. You should die. Mm -hmm. So I can, if I if I'm if if I may real quick, it is. I just, I just want you to get the very next verse to show him in Galatians. Read verse kind seventeen, because he's we're talking about justification. Let, let, let's let's comprise it. You cannot be justified by the law does not mean you don't have to try to keep the law. It just means you can't be justified by it. Okay? You can't be justified by it does not mean you don't have to do it. It's not. Those are mutually exclusive statements. Look at the next verse. Read. Kind of verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we also... So like we ourselves also are found sinners. Is there for Christ, the minister of sin? God forbid. Kind of, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to mute your mic, brother truth. And I'm going to mute my mic. Read that again and read it right. Go ahead. Kind of the one. Hey, it's the book of Galatians chapter two and 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. What that means is the law can't justify you. Only Christ can. But while you are seeking Christ to justify you, you can't be breaking the law. You could have broken the law and Christ can justify you. But in the moment you need Christ's justification, you will have had to cease from your law breaking mm -hmm. to stop breaking the law is to begin to keep the commandments. This is easy. I can't say it no plainer than that. Uh, Brother Truth, do you understand? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but Galatians 3, 23 through 25, I believe, it says that we are no longer bound. Uh, stop. A guardian or school or a school. Uh, or stop, a school stop, master. stop. That's we'll enough. Stop. Stop, Brother Truth. So, Before we advance to chapter three, mm -hmm. is what he said right here true? You're, I, I, I don't I believe interpretation is true, but the word is true, yes. Wait, stop. Look, see, I don't do that to the Bible. Justified. I don't do that to the Bible. Uh huh? I don't do that to the Bible. I don't say, yeah, I see this here, but something's later. Let's focus on that. No, one thing at a time. This is a letter. 
before Paul began talking in chapter three, that's a few words away. He said this, it's one cohesive thought. Mm -hmm. If you seek to be justified by Christ, mm -hmm. you cannot be currently sinning. Of course. But if you stop sinning, what have you started to do? But you can't stop sinning. See, that's, see, 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 now there's, if that was true, there is no reason to say this. Mm -hmm. If you seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister that would make Christ the minister of sin. God forbid he's not here so we can sin and be justified for sinning. He's here to justify our past sins going forward we have to stop sinning hebrews 10 and 26 now mm -hmm. read, read verse 19 for him can't stop sinning first john 1 8 see, see how you, see, you are you're not arguing with me nature. look yeah. you're not arguing with me like when you say that because i never read a scripture that says you can't stop sinning no, you can't. You have a sin name. What does First John one eight say? Wait, what does this say? Remember, we're here to go to Galatians six. Now we got to do three before we even get to six. But now we're leaving that and we're going to John. One thing at a time. This is how you learn the Bible. Ain't no scripture that says you can't stop sinning. That's got to be admitted. The Bible actually says cease from sin. If you can't stop sinning, why does it say that? Mm -hmm. Got to rethink. Yeah. We got to re We got to rethink how we're looking at it. Let's look at this one more time. If you, if you seek to be justified of Christ, but if we are still found as sinners, that would make Christ the minister of sin. I can continue to sin and Christ will justify me. God forbid. For if we build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself of me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. This is why Creflo teaches not to try to keep the commandments. He equates frustrating the grace of God by trying to be righteous so grace cannot activate. That's stupid, guys. God already said, keep my commandments and live. He knows best. God is right. If you keep the commandments, you live. Mm -hmm. For if by righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That does not mean don't keep the commandments. That just means if righteousness came by the law, it was no need for Christ to die. Mm -hmm. It does not mean don't keep the commandments. That's what y'all been doing with Paul's letters. You've been taking these words. Don't keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And crossing out what Paul actually said and replacing it with that. Paul said, if righteousness came by the law, Christ died in vain. You say, don't keep the commandments. Now, it's mutually exclu exclusive statements. They don't mean the same thing. Righteousness has to be achieved through the seeking of God by earnestly keeping the commandments. And then where you fall short, Christ is there. Christ is, not, Christ is not there if you're trying to keep the law. Galatians 5, 3. This, 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 when, a, when a brother interrupts, he's, his mind is made up. So watch this. I'm going to cross I'm his there. words out and put my own words on what I think he, on what I think he I'm means. I'm trying to edify you, brother. If truth, if not, truth, yeah. truth is edifying me by telling me I don't have to keep God's laws. Right, truth? Why he won't say yes. I'm going to cross that out. Uh, I'm going to cross that out. You can't stop sinning. Can't. Like I'm going to replace that with, 
I don't have to keep God's laws. Truth. Is that right? If I could, if you would allow me, I can read first John 1 8. But you. but why can't you tell me if I'm right about that? I don't have to keep God's laws. See, what was your question, sir? I, I'm just interpreting what you're saying. I don't have to keep God's laws, right? That's not what I said. Wait, That's wait, wait, wait. Truth, watch how I'm doing this with you. Just watch. If that's not what you're saying, then I do have to keep God's laws. Let me, can, can I explain? Wait, before you explain, you give me a premise. Do I have to keep God's laws? You have to keep the commandments that are outlined in John 13, 34, and 35, Matthew 19, uh, 16 through 19, and Matthew 22, 34 through 40. So everyone who did not have access to the Gospels up to about 60 or 50 AD, they had to keep God's laws. But everybody after who was able to have access to the recorded Gospel, they don't because they read that. What came first, faith or the law? That, that does not answer my question. Yes, it is answering your question. That does not answer my question. It does. It if does I've, never heard, speak, what, what if I've never heard Christ speak, if I've never heard Christ speak, I have to keep the law. But everyone else who heard him speak, they don't, right? The ones, the ones who kept the law in the Old Testament didn't keep it out of, it out of faith in God. It wasn't because... Oh, I, I'll have to follow this law to go to heaven. No, they kept it out of faith. What? I don't, I don't, I don't understand your conversation. Genesis man. fifteen six. I don't say Christians don't know Old Testament. I know it well. Wait, I didn't say that to you. No, wait, six. wait. I never Somebody said that. Did. I don't know who said it. So I never said. Nobody 15, said that. 15, no, no one, one said that. that. Abraham. Wait, up. wait, wait, wait. Stop. Abraham nobody God said. Righteous were justified. All right, all right. I, I, I respect your sermon, but nobody said Christians don't. Nobody said that. Somebody did say that in the, in the chat. Why are you oh, talking they, to the chat, but you talking um, to me? Somebody did say that. But like, so why are you, why are, why are you interfacing with the chat, but talking to me? I'm not doing that to you. You have my complete undivided attention. So when no, I'm, I'm not like, interfacing with the chat now, it was, it was before when I was in this, the audience. This, this, this is what I'm saying. Like that makes sense to you, but to me, the person you're talking to, you just said something in response to me that I didn't even say. But you're no, telling was, me it's okay. I never said it was you, sir. Oh, so I then don't. You. So then talk to me. Don't don't worry about the chat. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to tell you what was that the king. Let the other one finish his statement and then respond, okay? Yeah, because both upset. of y'all talking at the same time, y'all yeah. negate each other's mics. Yeah, I'm I'm not upset. I'm used to this. This is how all Christians are. So what I'm saying is and I said that. This how this is how all Christians are. They break one piece of the Bible to make another piece true and put it behind them. And then when they're forced to explain that piece that's behind them, they'll break something in front of them to go back to that. But we can't teach it all together at the same time. Christianity can't do that. Sure, that's not true. Yes, that's it is because yes, 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 it is because Matthew 23 and 1, where we began. Let's read what Christ said. Read it. Good. And now that proves that I can say that. Watch this. Read this. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 23 and 1. Then Jesus, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe that observe and do. But do not, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. That scripture means. I had the scripture read. I called the scripture. Obviously, I'm going to explain the scripture. And he asked me, what does that mean in reference to this? Comment? He should be like, he should be like, hmm, that's a that there's a reason he came here. I wonder what he's trying to say if he's trying to understand me. Right, because I understand my Christian brothers. I know where they be coming from. So, so what Christ just said: the scribes and the Pharisees are Moses today. They sit in his seat, just like Moses. You're supposed to do what he says. Whatever the scribes and Pharisees tell you, do what they say. Would the scribes and Pharisees tell you anything else except keep the commandments? 
Of course not. They're going to tell you, keep the commandments. They're going to tell you how. They're going to tell you what to do. The only thing you're not supposed to do is after their works. Don't be a hypocrite. See, because they say do the commandments, but they don't do them themselves. Don't be like them. You know why that makes sense? Because back in Matthew 5, he said, your righteousness must exceed the scribes and Pharisees. That makes sense. So if, if the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, they're going to tell me what Moses told me. That's Jesus Christ teaching that. But we use Christ to teach an idea different. We use Christ to teach that we don't have to do God's laws. You see that? And that's why we ask questions like, what's the law of Christ? I understood instantly why you're asking that. Because the Christian church, to make that work, they suggest that Christ teaches differently than Moses as far as what righteousness is. But Christ and Moses teach the same thing. Jesus right. said, if you would have believed Moses, you could believe me. No, if they read the Bible, no Christian would say that. That's 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 ridiculous. And that's why I asked you those Moses two taught, very. Taught that, things, that, that's why I asked you those the, two the very. Is, I, I respect your sermon, but that's why I asked those two very important questions. Okay. If you're telling me I don't have to keep the law, mm -hmm. aren't you telling me I don't have to do God's laws? No. I'm telling you, you don't have to keep the law in, in reference to salvation. Wait, <laughs> listen again. Righteousness. Yeah, I mean, that's a new, that's that's a new statement, Micaiah. And look, Micaiah, I, I can respect that. The, the, God, uh, God. As outlined in the, in the New Testament. Uh, Romans 10 4 it says that Christ is the inner law of all those who believe. But the thing is, Christ abolished law, some law, right? Okay, but well, let's, 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 let's examine let's 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 examine one scripture in John 13. Let's examine one scripture at a time in Matthew 19 before we make a gumbo. That's what's left over. But you follow those through love. Because just, just like you said, I totally true. agree with you. True. Is that love true, true. Fulfills the, the, the rest of the command truth i don't want to stop you from talking but the way you teach i have to believe everything you're saying nothing can be confirmed it's just the brother said in, in john chapter 13 and look what we talk about in romans 10 4 you're asserting that those scriptures agree with your position without examining what's being taught in those places that's why we like to do one thing at a time as practicing hebrew israelites we teach very slow one scripture and we fully exegeted before we advanced. That's why in Galatians 2, that was important to understand, but we left it. In Galatians 2, while seeking to be justified by Christ, you cannot be found a sinner. Else you make Christ the minister of sin. You can't say, I can't stop sinning. Thank you, Jesus. You can't. You have to cease from sin. Your wicked works, you have to stop doing that then you have to seek justification through Christ. You can't say, I'm about to go murder somebody, but I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. So it's going to be all right after I do this. That sure. violates the Bible. I'm going to show you how. Hebrews 10 and 26. Let's stay in the New Testament. We, yeah. we, I think he didn't. I don't think he was here when we was teaching all that. So we kind of got to do a, a quick uh, recourse. I was, I, was, I was here doing most of it. I was here doing most of it. Well, then there's no way you could be saying so, some of this. How does that coincide with... I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. The Bible doesn't oppose itself. Only we oppose ourselves in our in our uh, unbelief and our inexperience. Go to Hebrews 10 and 26. This, this is the Hebrews. book. Uh, he, go ahead. Hey, go ahead, Ken. You good, Ken. Hebrews 10 and 26, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Can Jesus Christ cover sins that we do willfully? That's for Brother Truth to answer. Oh, say, ask the question again, sir. Can Jesus Christ cover sins that we commit willfully? Is there a sacrifice can, for that? Can he cover the sins that we, that we do? Willfully, that what you're asking? I mean, obviously, you repeated it verbatim. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we're, we're through repentance. Read it again. No, listen, man. He, really he said no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 
Look, Christian doctrine requires you to believe the instructor, even if it's adversarial to the words of the text. Facts. No, that's true, because I asked you, can you sin willfully? And you said yes, but the Bible said this. Read it again. Okay. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. If we sin willfully, is there a sacrifice that can cover that? <laughs> okay, so you ask me if you sin willfully, is there a sacrifice? Jesus Christ, okay, so what that scripture is actually saying is after you receive knowledge of truth, which is in scripture, you can't go on sinning. Yes, I agree with that. But what? So Woof! was First John one eight. That's hard. That's you sad. Leaving this Bible scripture to go to First John. That's we, bad. We leaving it like instead of him saying this isn't all the way true, or instead of him saying I know it says this, but the author of Hebrews doesn't have it all the way right. He said, "Let's go to John one eight. But this says something. Is this true or not? Of course it's true. It's the word of God. So if it's true, we can't sin willfully. There's no sacrifice, I, right? That's not what that means. can't stop sinning. Wait, brother. look, 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 guys. If, look, if, look, if, look, if, look. If, look. If truth. Can, I'm a, truth. It's, you're going to have a chance to explain, but I got to say what you're saying without the smoke. Guys, if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. That does not mean if you sin willfully, after that, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. That's what truth is saying to us. Now, Brother Truth. Can I explain my platform, please? Now, Brother people, Truth. You me? Now, now so Brother I, Truth. I don't want... Did I represent you correctly in your exegesis of Hebrews 10 and 26? Uh, I guess so. I don't. I really. I didn't really hear what you said. I was focused on people muting my mic. No, no. Focusing on oh, your man. mic being muted doesn't stop your ears from working. Man. Hey, hey. Don't don't mute his mic. Leave his mic open. I'm good Please. at this. Leave his mic open. I'm gonna ask okay. you again with your mic open. Okay. For if so, we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Mm -hmm. That does not mean for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Okay, can I explain it? Does Am I right when you say that? No, not, not exactly. Now, can I explain? now, on an academic level, how can we learn, brothers? Well, let me, let me explain. Because what he's saying is the scripture says that, but it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that. You're, you're, you're you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. How? Wait. Respect as me as your student, 19, right? Respect me as your student, brother. Truth. Re, re, not okay. Re, re, repent. Re, respect me as your student, because now we leave in this verse. Respect yeah. me as your student. The I, writer of Hebrews is talking about those who know the knowledge of truth and sin without repenting. It's not talking about that you that that you have the ability to stop sinning because you have the ability to stop sinning. Jesus. Wait, let me read this again. Wait, let me let me read this again with Genesis three. Let me read this again with your understanding. See, you want to go, you want to go to other verses, but as your student, I want to know that I understand this verse. This really means this really means listen, this this verse, the author of Hebrews wrote this, but really meant this. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth and we and refuse to repent, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. That's the this, correct. That's the correct way to see this. Hebrews comes after, before, or after Acts. <laughs> what now? Now, now, what he's saying is, there's an abrogation. The doctrine comes down in stages. Y'all understand? Well, you have to understand the. You have to understand the, the Bible. I, I that, know. that that would mean that when that would mean that but Christ that would mean that Christ's ministry 
is irrelevant. Wait, 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 brother and Truth. John the Baptist. Brother Truth, first, brother, Truth. First, brother Truth, I respect your sermon. I respect your I respect your sermon, but we in a class. We we not trying to hear a sermon. We're doing academic I'm not, things. I'm not preaching to you, sir. I'm yeah, no, to you. no. You you know how you're preaching to me. I'm you told me. Question. You know how you're preaching question. to me. When a teacher you, asks questions to her students, that's the pool. You, that's the pool already collected oh, oh, knowledge oh, from oh, the students. Okay, okay. But you know how you're preaching so they, to me. So now, now oh, can grow. Oh, okay. But you know how you're preaching to me. You're telling me the author of Hebrews, his text. And the writings in here cannot be fully understood unless you have the book of Acts. Right. You and that's you what's can. wrong. And that's what's wrong the with Bible Christianity. Builds on itself, that, that, bro, no, it does not. It doesn't, it doesn't, it you doesn't, just, it doesn't work like that because be there's a responsibility you, that you, you never thought Genesis? of. There's a there's a responsibility that you never thought of when you said that. Mm -hmm. The responsibility is those churches that had not received the book of Acts did not know how to please God. The churches that did not receive the book of Galatians did not know how to please God. Mm -hmm. The churches don't, don't, talk, don't, 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 don't talk over me. Just let me run my class. Don't talk over me. You're the, you're the centerpiece. You, you have the floor, but you're not going to preach here. You're going to be responsible for everything you say. If you say Hebrews, what was written first, Hebrews or Acts. Now you have to think if that mattered, that would mean if I don't have the book of Galatians, I don't know how to please God. But Paul didn't write to the Corinthians what he wrote to the Galatians. But that would mean Paul set the Corinthians up to fail because he left out what he taught the Galatians because it comes down in stages and it builds on itself. I don't believe that. I think there is one doctrine. Do you believe that Paul taught the Old Testament and the New Testament to the to the believers, or did you do you think what, what do you think Paul, Paul taught? Paul didn't walk around with his letter to Galatians. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I don't think I know what Paul taught because he said it. Okay. But I'm. I don't think. I don't think Paul. Exactly. I don't think Paul walked around with the book of Galatians and pulled up on people and said, let me read you my letter to the Galatians. I don't think he did that. I think Paul did what everyone did, even Christ. They taught the law and the prophets. Precept. Read it. Go ahead. Since, the brother, since the brother likes the book of Acts, Acts 28 and 23 will answer his question directly. Yeah, I got that. Let's read it. This one. I was gonna go to twenty six, but go to twenty eight. Yeah, it's Kyle, I'm holding twenty six. Like, go ahead. But we desire to, <laughs> but we desire to hear of thee, what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him, unto his. Okay, I can take out my headphones. No, you were clear. You can be better now. I was, clear. I was clear. Well, look, we're reading Acts 28 and uh, 22. So you can read along with us. You know what I'm saying? You could crack your Bible and read it with us. Even if he mumbles, you know what he's reading because we're reading it together. Uh, can do that again. Acts 28 and 22. Okay, okay. Uh, it's Acts 28 and 22. <clears throat> it reads, but... We, de we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it's, it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him unto his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. Read Acts 26, 22. Hey, I got it. Acts chapter 26. Let Mike I read it. Salaki. All right. Hey, this is the book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. That Christ should suffer. Incorrect. That read Salakia. Salakia. Verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God. I continue on this day 
witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those the prophets and Moses did say should come. That's Paul teaching in two places out of Moses and the prophets. Read Acts 24, 14. This is the book of Acts chapter 24 and verse 14. And it reads, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believe in all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. It would be it would be unnecessary to hold fast to those things if Paul came to teach us that those things are unneeded or they're mm -hmm. less relevant than my book of Galatians, guys. Y'all got to see this letter I wrote to the Galatians because this changes everything. No, I don't believe that. The book of Galatians is in accordance with the law and the prophets. It has to be. It cannot be different. It cannot teach revelation outside of. Even Christ coming to die for the nation and justify them of their sins is found in the prophets. Exactly. That, that's hey, that's it. Hey, Salakia, Adewan, just to make a quick point, don't want to get too deep, but I believe in Acts chapter 14, it tells you that Paul was writing to the Galatians. All right. In Acts chapter 14, if I'm not mistaken, okay, all right, it's in the book of Acts, though. He was writing to the Galatians, all right, in the book of Acts. Now, we know Luke wrote the book of Acts, okay, but it's speaking of Paul. That's Paul's, that's Paul's student. Right, that's Paul's student. And uh, I'm led to believe that Timothy wrote the book of Hebrews, which is also Paul's student mm -hmm. through my research. Now, understanding that then Timothy believes the law and the prophets. Understanding that, Luke believes the law and the prophets. Both of those things cannot be true if the law now is not necessary to be followed because we can't stop sinning, right? Job was perfect, but we can't stop sinning, right? right. The parents of John the Baptist in the New Testament were blameless according to the law, but we can't stop sinning. The, this is this is this is the doctrine of the Christian. They're not blameless according to the law, even though it says they were blameless according to the law. Mm -hmm. They're only blameless because they had faith, even though it doesn't say that. That's the doctrine. Well, why does Habakkuk say in two four that now we in Habakkuk? That shall live by faith. That's an Old Testament. Because Revelation uh, uh, twelve uh, fourteen twelve. Right. This is why Revelation fourteen twelve. This is why. Revelation 14, 12. Okay. If you you kind of got to want to understand it because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to understand it, it becomes circular like how this conversation is going. It becomes circular like I know Hebrews 10 and 26 says that, but that can't be right because John says this. So Hebrews 10 and 26, even though it says that, it must mean something else than what it says right there. It becomes uh, like that. Contradict itself, and yeah, but and, but but the contradiction you know, is on well, you. Uh, but, it's not but the contradiction itself. is on you. Revelation fourteen twelve. Show him. Re Revelation fourteen twelve. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you need both of them. That's what we teach. You cannot willfully sin. You got to keep the commandments of God. But should you, in your error, sin, you have faith in Christ that you can be absolved. Mm -hmm. You can't willfully sin by saying, I don't have to do that anymore. No, that's not what that, that's not what Hebrews means. You're being dishonest to the text. That's wrong. I'm, I'm quoting the text verbatim. Read it again. Hebrews 10, 26. He's telling me I'm being dishonest to the text and I'm yes, quoting what it says. And I'm quoting what it said. Just because you don't want it to mean that, that's well, on I you. I want it to mean what it says. Okay, read what it says. Read what, what it says. Willfully mean. Yeah, he said, what does sin willfully mean? What is willfully? What's the why, why do we have to degrade ourselves and our intellect? That's an ignorant question for someone who proclaims to know the scriptures. What does sin uh, willfully mean? 
kind of question. What what does the define the word willfully? That 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 to me that to me is like if you're asking that, then you got to yield your mic and be a student, and there's nothing else. But if you're proclaiming to have an understanding of what these scriptures say, you can't even ask that. What do you mean? What does it mean to sin willfully? Go ahead and teach. Sinning willfully is sinning on purpose. Right. Simple. What do you mean? So sinning on purpose, right? I got, I got, a, I got a blue letter definition. If you want me to pull it up, at all. Get that for him. Do, do, do Christians sin? What's the reason why I said do Christians? Sin? Yes. Pull it up, at all. Yes. We You're tell right. yes because we tell Christians God said do not eat pork, and they say Paul said I can. Where does it say that in the New Testament? See, see, yeah. that means that. Look, check this out. That yeah, means that means everything God created that, is good. that means that in Romans Jesus 15. Christ's day, when Timothy had not had a letter written to him yet, you could not eat pork. But when Paul came and wrote a letter to Timothy, and then the people found that letter in the churches, copied it out, and mass produced it, then you can eat pork. That's what he's saying. He's not saying he's not saying God says you oh, can yeah. eat pork. That's the problem. Can, can, can I read First Timothy four, please? What What did God say? Watch this. Now the uh, Bible can't contradict itself. What did God say? Well, every word of the of the Bible. And every word I can't get a. God I can't Second get that answer. Like I get. I can't get that answer. I can't get that answer. I can't get what did God say? I can't get God said this because that puts you in a bind. At some point, you have to teach the student. Not at all. All right, then don't be in a bind. Then don't be in a bind. At some point, you have to teach the student. God said you can't do it, but later Paul said you can. That's honest. Yeah. Truth, you're not going to say right. that. That's why you're talking about God breathe. That has implication. That means God said you can't do it. And later, Paul has the authority to tell you you can. But you're not going to say that either. You're not. You're not going to say that. Absolutely no sense. That would be honest. He said, and he said that He said that makes absolutely no sense. But remember, I asked him, you're what did God that. say? You're saying the Bible. You're saying the Bible is I'm, contradicting. No, no. You're saying that. You're <laughs> saying that. You're saying you don't understand the Bible. Go to First Timothy four and four. Right. We're gonna teach that. Go right. To 4 and it, all he has to do is read it. Go to First Timothy four and four. First Timothy four and ver hold, hold on, true. First Timothy four and four. It says, "For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused." If it be received with thanksgiving, read on. For it, is, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What food is sanctified by the word of God? <laughs> show, me where, show me where God sanctifies every food. He called Paul God? He just did. Sickness, man. Christianity's like a disease, man. It's like no, it's not. I don't understand because that means even Peter, the rock of the church, who received the keys from Christ, told an angel to his face, "I have never ever eaten anything unclean." Ever. That's right, Adewan. That's angel, right. The angel said, "Peter, kill and eat," and he said, "Not so." Bold. You're telling me that you're right. And Paul is wrong. No, I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that Paul is talking about. Actually, I've done the study, right? I care enough. So Paul is talking about food that is sacrificed to idols. He has a whole chapter on it in Romans. Mm -hmm. This is something that he's teaching Timothy. In Romans, you have to deal with food in the shambles that is sacrificed to idols. Right. This is a problem for Israelites who are trying to keep the commandments. The reason that it's a problem is because God says, touch not the unclean thing. Now they can't even eat. Of course, they're going to ask Paul about this under Christ. I mean, do we get mercy here? Paul is teaching the people 
If the food is sanctified by God and you pray over it, it is, it's good. It's good. You know why it's good? Because idols are nothing. That's all taught in Romans. If you are unaware of that context, you mean to say every creature of God is good to eat. I could eat a person. Mm. Wait, I explain that? Wait, every, because your argument against me was, no, it says everything. Well, I'm going to use your argument and believe it. Well, uh, everything, every creature of God, it don't say food nowhere. Every creature of God is good. Now, why wouldn't you be there? Okay, go ahead. For everything God created, God created, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected. Now, <laughs> I can eat a person. I, I just got to pray over it. Well, if, if you want to eat a person, that, that's on you. And oh. that's why Christian. Yo. yo. Goodbye, man. Goodbye. Yo, get him off the sticks, yeah. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. That's why I have to come off the mic for that. Hey, one. get him off the sticks. <laughs> Ain't no way. This is crazy. Ace, Ace, Ace they want to be right so bad, they will concede that you can eat people so that they can continue to eat pork. That's wild. madness. He conceded if you want to do that. I guess if you want to. Yo, you got him up out of here? <laughs> man said if you want to eat it. That's what's wrong with my people, man. That's what's wrong with my people, man. It, it doesn't mean that doesn't make him a bad person. He just doesn't want to understand. He, he wants to see it his way. Right. But we're not going to do that. Hebrews 10, 26. Say what it say. Paul taught the law and the prophets. Now let's go to John. First uh, John 1, 18. What's up? If First if Timothy is teaching right, you can eat everything. Why in Acts are they teaching do not eat anything strangled with blood? Ooh, that's I don't, deep. I don't know. That's deep. Go to let's go to First John one and eight. Canada. It's First John one and eight. If we say that we have no sin, we receive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We he deceive taught, ourselves. He, he taught that that means you cannot stop sinning. Keep reading. Crazy. If we confess our sins, it's like an other one. It's a bad echo. I'm sorry. Come on. It says, if, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Read on. If we say that we have not sinned, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. No one up here is saying we have not sinned before. See that? We admit that. And Christ cleansed us of that unrighteousness. This does not say you can't stop sinning. We've all sinned before. But does that mean you have to do that again? That's hey, Salaki. Hey, Salaki. Hey, it's Salaki, Adewan. Hey, I mean, the thing about it, man, the brother's argument is that, you know, <laughs> if it says it, if it says this in Acts, okay, you know what I mean? And Galatians is going to doggone supersede it, okay, because it comes after it. But how about we stay? Okay, in the book of First John, and hey, let's go to First John, all right, chapter five. Okay, and let's let's read verse three. Okay, let's go to First John chapter five and verse three. We're gonna stay in First John. Kind of right. one. This is the book of First John, chapter five and verse three. Uh huh. For this is the love of God uh -huh. that we keep His commandments. All right, and, and the brother said that we can't. You can't stop sinning. You can't stop sinning. Read. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not hard to keep. That's what grievous means. Okay, brother said you can't stop sinning. You can't stop sinning. We're gonna stay in First <laughs> John. Okay, we're gonna go in first, first, stay in First John. Let's go to First John two and three. Okay, I mean the the, the, the brother, I, I can tell he's zealous. Okay. I right, but he's stuck on Christianity, man. The brother's hooked, man. It's like a disease, man. It's 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 like a drug out of one. All right, these brothers and sisters is strung out. All right, read that thing. 
No, there's nothing you can ask me as a reasonable man to justify eating a person. And you could never get wow. me, you could never get me to suggest or say such a thing. You could never get me to ask, what does sin willfully mean if I'm in a theological conversation? I should at least respect myself enough to know that I know what that means, right? Or else I don't need to be asking no questions or challenging, right? But Christians that do that so that their doctrine can work. And that's, we don't like that. Why are you acting like that? Don't act like that. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean I could eat a person? Why would you suggest such a crazy thing? And then it becomes, well, if you want to do that, I get it. Like, what? No, I can't eat a person because that's against God's laws. I, listen, man. If you want to do that. I, I didn't have any patience for that. I thought that was... Because something else I care about is how we look on the world stage. Not to cut your wisdom, my kind. I'm get right back to you. Um, something I care about is how we look on the world stage. We look like buffoons sometimes. We look like we shouldn't even handle a Bible with some of the things that we say or how we approach a biblical discussion and the way we behave, right? It's certain things you cannot do. If you want to say... That scripture doesn't mean that, that's fine. But you must first admit, I know it says that. However, I believe the writer was in error and had a lack of understanding. And later it's made clear, but you're not gonna say that. But these are the things you would have to say for your points to work. We're willing to say things and stand on it. But Christians always have to move their position. So if I tell you, you can't eat the food, why? Because God said you can. not If you ask me to prove that, I can. If I say, you can't eat the food, and you say, why? I say, because it's in the law, I can prove that. If you ask me, why does 1 Timothy 4 and 4 say this? I can say, because it's talking about food sacrifice to idols. But God made every creature that is sanctified by his word good to eat. Just pray over it. That's the point. And nothing changes. God still said you can't eat it. I'm still teaching 1 Timothy 4 and 4. You still can't eat it. And I don't have to break 1 Timothy 4 and 4. I can just teach the scripture. Everything is good to eat if it's sanctified by the word of God. Sanctified means set apart. Where can I find the food set apart by God? In the law. I don't have to ignore. Peter told an angel to his face. Not so. Not so. He said, Lord, not so, Lord. I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And even after the angel showed him the vision, he was still thinking about it. Like, it can't mean eat a roach and a scorpion. It can't mean that. Oh, he's talking about mankind. It was a parable. That was bold for Peter to stand up to the angel like that. Because Paul taught us, even if a creature come preaching another gospel, whether it be an angel in heaven, let him be accursed. Don't let nobody turn you away from God's laws. We really got to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. We tried everything else, y'all. Being righteous is not going to be attained by saying, I don't have to try to be righteous. It's not going to be attained. You must keep the commandments and the faith. And we can read that for you. And this is, and, and uh, I'm going to let Micaiah uh, get his point out because I know he's holding it. But I want to show you in Revelation chapter two, why Brother Truth's doctrine is uh, something that Christ hates. But Micaiah, make your point first. Bring it up. Hey, hey, I don't want a, a point. A point. Salakia. A, a point's already made, Adawan. Point's already made. Hey, we can go ahead and move on. All right. Well, truth didn't leave, and that's good. He just got ejected from the stage for saying something crazy like that. Talking about, I don't want, listen, a Muslim listening to this conversation goes, Christians believe you can eat people. That's how sick these people are. An atheist ago, Christians are just ridiculous. I was in a room and a Christian was saying, "You, if you wanted to, you could eat a person because everything's good. Every creature of God is good. 
No, the word is manifest and it's plain. You just need wisdom to understand it. We're not saying the Bible contradicts itself like Yahweh said, you saying that. I believe 1 Timothy 4 and 4 agrees with the law. If it's sanctified by the word of God, it's good to eat. A sophisticated Christian will say, well, now wait. Anything consecrated to an idol is unclean. And the Bible says, touch not the unclean thing. What now? Paul doesn't have the authority to give you permission to eat food sacrificed by idol. That's a whole nother intelligent conversation. That's on a different level than where we right. were just at. You talking about we could eat people? It's like no, you just gotta listen now. You don't understand. That's wild. Yeah, you don't. That's you wild. don't understand. Let's go to Revelation chapter two. I want to show you this, and um, I always give credit where it's due. Uh, this was brought to my attention by Captain Malachi. He he brought this to my attention. Okay, I want the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and I'm gonna explain what that is. Out of one of the book of Revelation, chapter 2, starting at verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who have taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols. See, this is what, like, like, I want Brother Truth to be here. You 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 thinking Timothy is teaching you can eat a cockroach, man, a damn praying mantis. Hey, you teaching that you can eat the parasites out of a pig's stomach if you're hungry enough, because everything is good. You 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 teaching I could eat a damn uh, 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 bottom feeding isopod, look like a oh, big really? giant underwater cockroach, if I'm hungry enough. No, God told us the foods that are good to eat and beneficial to us. I hey, I can eat damn poison ivy. I'm hungry. According to him. That's unwise. It can't mean that. I can eat feces. I'm starving. No, it cannot mean that. It's talking about food sacrificed to idols. And this is a higher level conversation because Christ disagrees with that. He don't want you doing that. But Paul's teaching in Romans is very important because Paul said idols are nothing. There's the concept of the weak and the strong. If you're weak, you eat the food sacrifice to the idol in respect of the idol. Like this is Zeus's steak. You know, God forgive me, but I got to eat this. Whoa, you're wrong for eating that. You should, you should throw that steak in the trash. But if you're strong, you go, Zeus does not exist. There's no such thing as Zeus. I'm about to eat this steak. I'm hungry. Right? Ain't no such thing as Zeus. That's the strong mind. And uh, we taught a lesson of that on our channel. It's called The Weak and the Strong. Uh, tune into Sons of Thunder Israelites and type in Weak and the Strong and you could get that lesson. We explain that. That's how we know that Paul is not at odds with Christ. It's a greater meaning. Read uh, Revelation 12 and 14 all the way through. Read that. Talking 14 out of one? Yeah, read that. Two, 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 King. To stay in the doctrine of a Nicol Nicolaitans. Gone. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there, flock you, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. See that? Read on. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Now, I know I can't have this conversation with Brother Truth. He don't understand this yet. That's why, you know, we sent him down because there's no, there's no more reason to sh uh, strive with you. I, and we love you, brother. But you got to learn something before we can continue to debate. You got to learn some things. Christ hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. What is the doctrine? of the Nicolaitans. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is, it's the fatal mistake that man can freely partake in sin because the law of God is no longer binding. 
My cut. Cut. That's, that's it. That's it. That cut Christianity. Hey, 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 Malachi, hey, 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 we got to get that brother. We got to get that brother credit for that thing. Hey, that, that cuts Christianity right there. Hey, you got to read that again for him, Adewan. The doctrine of the Nicolaitans is a form of antinomianism. It makes the fatal mistake that man can freely partake in sin because the law of God is no longer binding. God said, I can't eat pork. That law is no longer binding. I can eat pork because Paul said so. That's crazy. That's what you're saying. God said I can't do it, but Paul says I can. He even he, he, he even got confounded in his words. He was like, Paul, God, right? Short circuited for a second. Yeah, he glitched. He glitched out because God said I can't do it, but Paul says I can't. No, hell no. You just don't understand that verse. And that's fair. But instead of arguing it with us, think on that for a second. God said you can't, but Paul said you can. So God changed his mind and you and waited. Not even Christ said that. He gave that revelation to Paul. Christians would like to believe that. Hey, hey I don't want, could you read that next paragraph for Nicolaitans? You said read the next paragraph? <laughs> okay. Nicolaitans of the second century have continued to extend the views... You muted on a clubhouse. You don't mute on one. Nicolaitans of the second century seem to have continued and extended the views of their first century adherents, holding to the freedom of the flesh and sin and teaching that the deeds of the flesh have no effect upon the health and soul and consequently no relation to salvation. Yeah. That's all, exactly what they teach. All you need is faith. Damn, that's the exact words the brother said on the stage. <laughs> yo, yo, that right there is insane. Cause look, they want Hebrew Israelites ain't had nothing to do with this right here. Mm -mm. Ain't had nothing to do with this writing right here. That's crazy. I got to deal with that. The Rock, this revelations up. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Theopedia. The, hey, it don't matter. Hey, hey, uh, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is Christianity, up. Uh. It's Christianity, I, this, this, this is it right here. This is the coldest. Yo. I, I love the whole Bible, but this is the coldest cut right here. It's Yo, he, in cut. The, he in the chat, he said, I'm going to eat pork every day. <laughs> Yo. Ain't no way. True, you a wild dude, man. You a wild dude. You're incorrigible, I. You're, you're incorrigible. Roger, I don't want this all, always brings me to the point that you've always made that christians love christ or love teaching christ except when it comes to what christ taught and i just want to grab a few precepts real quick this is the book of um first peter chapter 2 and verse 21 it says for even here unto were ye called because christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, <clears throat> right? And so when we look up that word guile, it means deceit, right? It means subtility, right? And when you go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48, he says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So Christ who had no guile in his mouth was telling people to be perfect, to be without sin. Now, this is the kicker. This is one that always gets me. This is Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to deal with this. This is Matthew 7 and verse 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Right, we know what the will is. That sounds 40 and 8. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. 
Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. He said iniquity. That's a dagger. You can't get away from it. Iniquity. He went out. He went out, but he said iniquity. That was the last word. And iniquity. So like I got, I, iniquity I is uh, iniquity is defined as sin. Iniquity, that which is against God. Sin. Okay. Now this is very important. Look at the last part of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, brothers. It held the truth on the grace, gracious just meaning grace. It held the truth on the grace reckoning of righteousness, righteousness through grace. But suppose that a mere belief in this had a saving power. That's Christian. I'm saved by grace. I'm good. I believe I'm saved because I have grace. But the Bible tells you, you must keep the commandments and have the faith. Our Christian brothers have cognitive dissonance when we show that to them. Number one, it's new. Who are you to teach me something new? I have my own church. You don't tell me, boy, I'll teach you. You know how long I've been in this church? Number two, it's not only is it new, it requires you to change and it's uncomfortable, right? That's why he's typing in the chat. I'm going to eat pork every day. What? Let me let me do that. Let me do let me do an experiment real quick. This is I'm going to put this on the screen too. Put this on the screen. This is God, right? I'm going to make this real real uh big too. Watch. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. I'm going to eat pork every day. Hold on. Let's go to Leviticus 11 and 1. I'm doing an experiment, y'all, because Christians be saying stuff, but they don't want to really say stuff. The Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Unto them, the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Thus saith the Lord, I'm gonna eat pork every day. That's what you Christians are doing. God told you something, and you told him, I don't care. Y'all don't even have the balls. Let me, I'm going to say this. Y'all don't even have the balls to say what I'm about to say. If I thought Paul was teaching me to go against God's laws, I would denounce him publicly. If I thought Paul in his letters was teaching me to defy the most high God's laws, I would denounce him publicly. You don't have the heart to say that. Mm. What y'all are saying is Paul says something different than what God said, and I'm going to listen to Paul. That's really what you're saying. And you try to mask it. Well, God told Paul to say that to us. So now you're saying God gave us a law and changed his mind. And that's what's wrong with y'all, man. I yield right there. It's a lot that I, I got a preset. Is it this is this is this is Isaiah chapter 66 and verse uh 16. It says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right? They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree, in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination, and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. So mm. for the biblical prophecy in the end times, if you get caught in that day eating swine's flesh, the Bible says you're going to be consumed together, save the Lord. So whom, whom do you fear? You see what I'm saying? And, and Paul said he believed the prophets <laughs> and taught them. So how is Paul teaching Isaiah 66 and telling Timothy he could eat pork at the same time? That doesn't make any sense. And y'all yeah, didn't think cut, it through? He cut, too, because he kept saying, right, 
that no man can stop sinning. He said, no man can stop sinning. But Yahweh told the woman, go, sin, and no, sin no more. And hey, that's right. <laughs> so what do you mean? So did Christ, like, he cut, man. I, I don't know what he was talking about. They got to come out of that, that Christian. That's that's a coke, man. They got to come out of that coke, and that crack cocaine, man. He, but but the Christians don't do that. Hey man, y'all let my y'all let my man Truth back on the stage, man. He not he doesn't have his hand raised. But but Christians All don't right, do that. Cri Christians don't um, acknowledge what was just said to him. Christ told the woman, "Go and sin no more." Why did he tell her that if she can't stop sinning? What? <laughs> You would have to say, oh, what about this? And you got to leave this and go elsewhere. You can't answer that. And um, I wouldn't study in a school with teachers that taught me incomplete dogma like that. I don't like that. I'm going to ask hard questions as a student because I want to know and I care. And when I see that you evading, as soon as I told you, God said, don't eat it. But Paul said, I can. I got up and left because I'm afraid of God, not Paul. Now, let's go to Romans 10 and 1. That's the uh, motto of our camp. Roman, can you see it? Romans 10 and 1. Read that because he, he's saying Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. That's why Paul said you can eat whatever you want, which is still illogical because prophecy says you can't eat whatever you want. And the law says you can't eat whatever you want. And Paul taught that. So that means Paul would have to say to a new student, yo, Genesis through Deuteronomy, you don't really need to follow that. Listen to what I'm about to say next. I don't believe he was doing that. That would be against Christ. Okay. When Christ took the unclean spirits out of the man, Legion, what did he send them into? The pig. Some men of swine. That's right. And they and, and they didn't and, and look, he didn't send them into pigs and then they slaughtered the pigs and then they had ribs. They threw them off a cliff. Mm -hmm. They so lucky other one. <sighs> Go ahead. Uh, in Matthew 7, kind of one. In Matthew 7 and 14, and Christ told y'all there's one way that leadeth unto life, right? And it'd be few that find it, right? You know how you know how broad and 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 damn uh, very very wide your salvation of faith alone is. If you I ask mean, anybody on and, and on earth, they believe they believe that Christ exists. Hey man, I'm willing to take a bet with any of you brothers on the stage. I'll bet my I'll bet the shirt off my back. That he's not going to talk about the doctrine of the Galatians, uh, uh, Nicolaitans at all. That ain't going to be dealt with. Nah. Anybody want to take that bet that he's going to nah. try to deal with it? Anybody? I don't have an interpretation. I read what it is. Well, well bring it out again. No, oh, man, we taught it already. We're not going to keep you listening. listening. Why wasn't you listening? <laughs> Bring it up. No, man. What go look at. Go on your own time. <laughs> go, go, go on your own time, and look it up, and take time with it, and enjoy it. Enjoy the discovery. Wow, I didn't know that that was in the Book of Revelation. I didn't know Christ said that. Take your time. You know okay. what I mean. So now look. All right. I, can I can I ask him one question? I don't yes. got a deal. I don't got a deal. I just want to ask him one question. What, uh, hey, 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 brother, true. What do you think about the prophecy in Isaiah that was read in Isaiah 66? Where? Oh, Isaiah, where? Isaiah 66. I don't like that. Why he wasn't listening to you? Yeah, that's crazy. Oh. 66. Uh, ver reverse, get to the point, reverse 17. Mm -hmm. okay. oh. Hey, Salakia. Hey, I, hey, have him read verse 16. You got to get the full okay, context yeah. of that oh. thing. 
Reverse let me let me read it. Let me read it for you, uh, True. I'm gonna read verse 15. It's Isaiah 66 and verse 15. Watch this, True. All right. It says, "For the for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to re, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire." What what event is uh is Isaiah describing right now? What event? Yes. Oh, that's okay. Great answer. Verse 16, for by fire and his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slander of the Lord shall be many. Still talking about the judgment, right? Now let's read. 17, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Now I have a question, truth. In the day of judgment, if you're caught eating swine's flesh, will you be consumed together, saith the Lord? If I eat of the swine's flesh, I'll be consumed together. So come to an end here, the pleasure of I know the works and the thoughts, and the time is coming together, all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see, glory, see my glory. And I will set the sun among them, and from them I will send the power to the nations. Look at Makai's face, man. <laughs> hey, the brother, the, the brother's, the brother Sorry. trying to find the answer. So, hey. He's trying to find his answer. <laughs> my my fart, my fart, true. I don't mean. I thought I was muted. I apologize, true. As an offering to the Lord, of course, just in chariots and letters and mules. Okay, heaven. Okay. okay. It's a lot. Here. It's a lot here. It's a lot here. Brother Truth, and your answer is in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6, okay? Yeah, that's right. That's your answer, okay? That's right. The answer is in Malachi 3 and 6. That's what you're looking for, okay? You you really you really can't finish because you never answered the question. You you can say hello. You cannot finish because you never answered the question. The, he said face value. What does that mean? Wait, 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 what, what you mean? Do now do you believe that? Do, do you believe look 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 because what look look at what it say, right? Because it says, Thus saith the Lord. So God said the most high God said, if you're found in the day of judgment eating swine's flesh, you will be consumed together. Do you want uh, do you want to partake in that cup? Yes or no? No, do you want to take you want to partake of that cup, that judgment of being consumed together? Do you want to be consumed together with the sinners? Mm. You know what? I don't know the context of this. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. It's it's no context. Listen to the question. It's no quant wait, no truth, 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 truth. Wait, wait, wait. The, truth, truth, wait though, wait. There is no, because you said context. There's no context. Do you, Truth Ministries, do you, Truth Ministries, want to be consumed by the sword of the Lord? Is it yes or no? No. Stop no. eating pork. There you go. All praises to the Most High. Hey, show him, show, show him, um, show him. Isaiah 65. Here we go. Now he's going to wing it. Do not wing it. No, you don't. Do not wing it. Okay, so Isaiah 66 is, is, is talking about is talking about Jews that are under the law. See, I'm not, see how you winging it? I, 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 That's an end time I'm prophecy. See how you're winging it? And the scripture I'm never says that. Jews. I mean, it it, does that scripture say Jews? No, it don't say Jews, but... Okay, okay then, so why did you just say that, Truth? Truth, why did you just say that? 
if you go up to verse 7 and read all the way down, it's, 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 it's going with, it's aligning itself with Jerusalem. But, there's, but that's 12 tribes. That's not just the Jews. Jews. Truth. That has nothing to do with the question, though. <laughs> are those that eat swine flesh going to be consumed? Those that are those that are still under the law, yes. That never said it. Don't say that. Under the law. It doesn't have to say it for it to be true. See what I'm saying? And it, that's that makes it, no sense. Sixty six is talking about those. See what I'm saying now? Reasonable. Now, see what I'm saying? That, see, you, the student, now cannot read this. I, you can't read Isaiah. Christ read the scroll of Isaiah. It's in the gospel. He he opened Isaiah uh, chapter 62, I believe, and read it. But the Christian is telling you, you can't read Isaiah and understand it. It doesn't mean what it says. That's what you're being told. That's You got to be willing to accept that for his doctrine to work. You, the student, have to the book of Isaiah, it, I can't understand it. Even though it says what it says, it doesn't mean exact. There are things left out that I have to wait till the gospel comes and then Isaiah makes sense again. Isaiah is only talking about people under the law. So on, in the last day, the, the Israelites who are given the free gift of grace are still going to die because they're unaware of it. And they were doing God's commandments. And those of them that did God's commandments and knew of God's commandments and broke them, they gonna die. The ones that knew of God's commandments and broke them, but believed what Paul wrote, they're not gonna die. That, that's what he has to add here. And it don't say that. Go to Isaiah 65 and three, it's worse. Thank you. Hey, hey reverse. Exactly. We gotta read verse two. We gotta read verse two. Isaiah <laughs> Isaiah 65 and 2. And then go to Romans 11. You all going to keep on trying to make yourself look good by talking to him, or you going to turn their attention uh, to me? Get a, so get a, really get a, oh, get a, wow. Ghetto president, that's very rude. That's very proud, too. It says, a man that thinks you know anything knows no, nothing. No disrespect to the guy, but I do think I know more than you, so that doesn't matter. That And we brought, yo, wow. ghetto, get, hold on. We I brought, I brought ghetto president to the stage. I brought him up. I know how he is. That brother already confessed that you got to keep the commandments. I got that clip. The brother said the Hebrew Israelites got it right. I got that clip. And now look how he done backslid. He come on the class all rude and nasty, man. Read Isaiah 65 and 2. Kind of the one. It's the book of Isaiah 65 and verse 2. I have spread out my hand all the day unto a rebellious people, which walk in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. Come on. Verse 3. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. Come on, Salakia. Uh, a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face that sacrifice in gardens and burn of incense upon altars of brick. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and a broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, which say, which say, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. God said, These are the people that make me mad. And disrespect me to my face. They sacrifice in the gardens, idolatry. They burn incense upon altars of brick, idolatry. They remain among the graves, necromancy. They lodge in the monuments, hiding their idolatry. They eat swine's flesh and drink the broth of abomination. They're unclean. These are the people that make me mad. But look at verse two. I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people. Who quoted that? Who quoted Isaiah chapter 65 and believes it? Paul, go to Romans. This is crazy. Like, Paul is not your friend if you're trying to not keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. Go to Romans. Uh, Romans. Uh, I had 
I want 11. Because he quotes this scripture verbatim. I'm trying not to cheat. Mm -mm. Uh, it, it's right before 11. It's right the right. last verse of chapter 10. You can tell I ain't got my Bible, man. But there ain't no precepts on here. I'm struggling, y'all. I'm getting back, though. Read that. Romans 10 and 21. You got it, y'all. Okay, there's a book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 21. But to Israel, he says, All day long I have stretched out forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Where, did, where, did, where, did, where was that said? Isaiah said that. Mm -hmm. So, what made the people disobedient and gainsaying? They was eating swine's flesh, they was in idolatry. So, you're telling me Paul's going to quote that and leave out? But hold on. Y'all can eat. Y'all can eat whatever y'all want to eat now. No, Paul didn't even say that here. You suppose he's meant to say it in a letter he wrote to Timothy. This ain't email generation. Ain't no Twitter. Ain't That's no real. Instagram. You telling me Paul got a revelation that you can eat anything you want, and he only told Timothy. He didn't teach that to the Galatians. He didn't teach that to the Thessalonians. He didn't teach that to the Philippians. He didn't teach that to the Ephesians. Only Timothy learned that. Luke, his best student, didn't say none of that. That's hard to believe, man. We dragged on this for a while. What are we going to do now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the points, I think the points made. Shut that thing down. Time to Wait. shut that thing down. written before me i will not keep silence but will recompense even recompense into their bosom you can't get away brother truth man you got to put that port down keep the commandments and come back to and come back to the uh the sincere faith in uh christ man. Mm -hmm. i i do i do have one more this is this revelation chapter 21 and 18 it says but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with brimstone, with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So when you when we, what what makes your soul abominable? Your soul abominable with spiritual fornication and also eating unclean food. If you go to Leviticus chapter eleven and verse nine, it tells you whatsoever hath not fins and scales in the water is an abomination, right? When the, when the Greeks was then in the temple of the Most High God, sacrificing swine's flesh, what did they call it? They called it a damn abomination. They were sacrificing abominations in the temple. So you understand, you eating that, you become abominable. And therefore, you will have your part in the second death in a lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. Truth, you must, you must repent. I don't love pork that much. I, I don't want it that bad. I don't want to die for a piece of bacon, man. The Lord said, don't eat it. Okay. Life goes on. What you arguing? Uh, they going to look. If the angel appeared and said, hey, don't eat unclean things. You're going to argue with the angel. Nope. Paul said I can. Like none of that make no sense to me. If God said you can't do it, that's it. God said you can't be a sodomite. Paul said you can't be a sodomite. God said you can't be an idolater. Paul said you can't be an idolater. Mm -hmm. God said you can't be a murderer. Paul said you can't be a murderer. God said you can't be a drunkard. Paul said you can't be a drunkard. God said you can't eat unclean food. But Paul said I can't. No, that don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. And brother truth, you got to think on that. And you need to look up the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and digest that, man, because Christ hates that. All right. Um, I'm going to let uh, my guy take it away. Hey, all praises to the most high. Hey, uh, Hey, the water. You, you, you muted on the uh, club, bro. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, the king. Hey, all praises to the most high. Hey, hey, we'd like to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, all right, for joining us here all right, on Truth Tuesdays. Make sure you tune in, okay, to our other platforms. We got Milk Monday, okay, you got uh, the Thursday night, uh, Thursday night um, Thunder, right? 
Mm-hmm. Thursday night. Thursday night live. Thursday night live. Mm-hmm. Okay. We also have the um, the Sabbath class with Elder Yawal. Okay, on uh, Fridays, and, and also tune in to the Sabbath morning brew uh, with Brother uh, Aharon, Brother Yaqua, Brother Durak. Okay, and other brothers. Okay. All right. We're gonna go ahead and sign out. We hope that you brothers. Let me get. Let me get. Let me get one more okay, thing. Go ahead, King. Kind of the one. Uh, share my screen real fast. Uh, you brothers and sisters that's not have not already. So we have our regular. Our, we have our regular Sons of Thunder page right for YouTube, but right here we got three. We got three pages. This is the Alabama camp, the San Francisco camp, and the North Carolina camp. Make sure y'all subscribe to all three, right? We have four. We have four YouTube channels in total, right? Make sure you uh, subscribe to our other videos. Beautiful and heartfelt edification comes out of each one, right? We love it if all of y'all uh, tuned in to those classes and those videos that we have week in and week out, man. Doing the work of Yahweh. We love y'all dearly and love y'all. Thank y'all for y'all support. Right? All praises to the most high. Hey, can we get can we get one last scripture proving that you gotta stop sinning? John 9 and 31. Stop uh, sinning. Quit, 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 put away the wickedness, man. Stop. You tell lies, stop lying. You're you an adulterer right now. You know you're dealing with another man's wife. Leave that woman alone. Don't never go see her again. Block her number. That's it. You a thief? You a thief? Stop. Stop it. The hell is wrong with you? Stop. You stole your last item yesterday. Don't never do that again. That's right. You're a liar? Stop lying. Don't willfully do nothing wrong. And if you should per happenstance by accident sin, then you can ask the most high through Christ to forgive you for that thing. But if you fix your mind that, eh, sin is going to sin. I don't got to do them laws. You, you're going to die, all right? That's right. John, John 9 and 31. You're wrong. Right, this is the book of John, chapter 9 and verse 31. And it reads, now we know that God Heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. If you are a sinner, the most high do not. Oh, if you are a sinner, the most high does not hear your prayers. I guess the most high don't hear nobody's prayers since everybody can't stop sinning. But if you do his will, God hears your prayer. But I guess no, nobody does God's will because we can't stop sinning. That's a defeatist mind state. And that was taught to you by people who are not men of the Lord. That's who taught you that. That's a, that's a satanic mind state. Yes, we have sinned, but we do not continue in sin. We put it behind us. And when we fall short, we ask for mercy. We don't willfully sin. We don't do that. There's no forgiveness for a willful sin. I'm not going to tell my kind right now, I'm about to go commit adultery with some man's wife, but I'm glad I got Jesus, man. No, Jesus ain't there. I'm going to die for doing that action. I'm going to be found an adulterer. Salakia, Adewan, that's why, a, a Salakia, that's why Christ had to come, okay? He had to come. The, the, the blood of, of, of uh, goats, bulls, and rams, okay, they couldn't justify us. OK, they couldn't be our atonement. That's why Christ had to come to keep us from making this thing of remembrance. OK, keep doing it over and over again. OK, he had to come to give you a grace period. OK. All right. To let you know to come back to the law. All right. And stop sinning. OK, we're not doing that thing no more. You can't willfully sin. Just like Adam's bringing. I'm a you. I mean, we could do this all night, man. There's so much Bible, and it's so important to teach this because the Brother Truth is. I don't. I don't. I don't think Brother Truth is a hateful man. I don't think he's an evil brother. I, I think he's in the doctrine of the, on the clubhouse. I said I don't think Brother Truth is a hateful man or an evil brother at all. I think he's been mistaught, and he's being earnest to that. That's what he was taught. But 
with the scriptures that came out and the logic we're using, you got to see, well, hopefully the most, we can only water, the most I make it grow. But you got to see that you got to come out of that life. And hopefully by him looking into the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, he could really get it. Like, yeah, man, I've been thinking it's all about grace. No, I got to, I got to keep these commandments to the best of my ability. You know, I, I really enjoyed uh, being a part of this lesson. Thanks for having me out. Oh, praises. Thanks for coming. And boy, everyone. Oh, praises. And the boy, Powerful. Everyone. Okay, with that, right, we'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shemash like We the sons of thunder Israelites. It's our prayer and heart society that all Israel be safe. Come, come, Yashalom. Come, Yashalom.